Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. Today I have a compilation video for you where I put together every Valentine's Day DIY that I've made so far in 2024. So it's going to be a longer video. If you want to skip around, feel free. I'll be sure to include chapters below. We're going to start first with a snowman theme that I did for my coffee bar and also for some other Valentine's Day DIYs. We're also going to have conversation heart. DIYs. We are going to have Coastal Valentine's Day DIYs. We're even going to have a Valentine's Day tear tray DIY. So let's get started with the snowman theme. And I am going to start with my coffee bar first. So I got a couple of these little Valentine's Day signs. I'm going to cut the little heart house part off because I don't really need that. I just need some long signs to make a large sign for the top of my coffee bar. So I just went to my saw and just saw those off. I can always reuse those for another DIY. And I'm going to put both of the signs together side by side to make kind of a big palette board sign. So I'm trying to see which side's the best side. I'm going to go ahead and put that down and then I'm going to brace it together with just some jumbo popsicle sticks. You could always use um, Dollar Tree rulers or stuff like that for that too, but I have these and I think we can make these work. So I think three is going to be plenty. I wanted to do a fun sign for the top of my coffee bar and we're going to be doing Valentine's snowman DIYs today for my coffee bar but also some home decor after I get finished decorating my coffee bar. I love how everything turned out. Now I'm just using Gorilla Glue hot glue to glue this down. Um, you might want to use a little bit of wood glue too. I did notice that the signs were a little glossier than I probably would have thought, but the hot glue seems to have held up. I know the signs are kind of thin, so I was trying to avoid using my staple gun. Now for this snowman for our sign, I have one of these little MDF of snowman signs that I got at Dollar Tree this year. And it's got like a little raised scarf and um, brim of the hat. And then I don't really need a hole in it, so I just filled mine in with a little bit of spackle from the Dollar Tree. First step is to paint this. Now, one thing I don't really enjoy about the MDF signs from Dollar Tree is that they really like soak, you know, the paint in. So you're going to have to do a couple of coats to get like a bright white, but I'm just going to go ahead and go over everything just so I don't have to kind of cover up that like brown color when I go to try to make some like bright colors for a Valentine's Day. So I, I didn't really have any brushes, so I'm just using a tiny brush, which kind of made it a little bit harder. But we're going to go ahead and get this covered. I was trying to get as solid white as I could get for a base coat. I like the wood signs a lot better than the MDF signs, but sometimes that's the only ones that you can find. Once I got that, it was about one coat coverage. I really only need the face of the snowman to be bright white. So I'm just going to go over that part of the snowman with a second coat just to make sure it kind of pops against our red sign. And I thought snowmen would just be really fun. I, um, I do want to bring in some Valentine's Day colors though. And this was a point that I realized that I really don't have a good selection of pinks. I'm going to have to stock up on some pink paint for Valentine's Day. I must have used it all last year. But for the scarf, I'm just going to use this pretty salmon color that I have of acrylic. And it's a nice color of pink. It's not like, you know, real traditional for Valentine's Day, but I use this color a lot, my Valentine's Day decor. So I'm going to do the scarf and the top part of the little snowman hat in that color. And then the only other color of pink I had was this one. It's supposed to be kind of a um, chalky paint, like kind of a color of like a terracotta pot, I think is what it's called. And I thought I could work with it, but as you can see, it's kind of going on like, you know, super blotchy and it's just a very muted color of pink. And so I'm actually going to update that color, but that was my first go <laughs> at that. I decided just to mix some red and white together, make my own pink since I don't really have a traditional pink color. So that's what we're going to do here. I wanted to do like the snowman over on one side of the um, 
sign for the top of my coffee bar and I wanted something big, um, kind of take it up a lot, but I have a fun saying to put on the sign as well. So I'm going to update this part of the hat with my um, new color of paint and try to touch it up any of the snowman that I may have gotten some paint on. It's kind of tricky on those signs. And then of course for the little carrot nose, I went orange, but all I have is like a pumpkin color. So I just mix that with some white to give me kind of a pastel orange color. Nothing too bright for this little snowman nose. And then I'm just gonna use a black paint pen, draw on some really simple little snowman eyes. Try and tell like leave like a little white for like some eye shine to give it a little bit of character. I don't think he really needs a mouth or anything like that, so we're gonna leave it as is. Now I wanted to add like some hearts to it. I have this little like wood heart sticker from the Dollar Tree. I thought that might be cute like right over here on the side of the scarf where it kind of comes together. And then I was trying to decide, I wanted to like, you know, give some Valentine's Day to this hat. And um, my first attempt was these. So these are the little glitter, red glitter stickers from Dollar Tree. And I love these um, for Valentine's Day because they're so glittery. I did think here at the end that maybe I went a little bit too crazy with the red glitter. And so I do kind of change those up here in a little bit, you'll see. Now the snowman's gonna take up about half of the sign, which is fine, because I just have a fun little saying to put over on the other side. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use some hot glue and attach my snowman here to the front of my sign, kind of over to the left. I always like to kind of do whatever my theme is on my coffee bar sign and like do the writing over on the right, I like that. Now this is one of the little Dollar Tree love words. It's like a script and I thought this would be a really pretty way to do love because I'm gonna kind of be hand painting the rest of it. Um, you could always make a stencil, use some Dollar Tree letters and stuff like that if you're gonna make a coffee bar sign like this. But this is probably gonna be the only actual kind of professionally done letters and I'm just gonna paint the whole thing with some white acrylic to make that white, you know, pop against that red sign. And my colors today are going to be very traditional Valentine's Day colors, like lots of reds and pinks and white. And of course, snowman I try to incorporate in almost every DIY. So I'm just going to add some hot glue here to the back and glue that down. And you know, I always recommend using Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks. I always get those at um, either Amazon or Walmart. I have them posted in my Amazon shop. I love those and I accidentally used like one of... Um, another brand that came with my glue gun and I was like, oh my gosh, this doesn't work near as well. It really made me like them better. Now I just did is with a little heart eye and then I'm just doing like a Ray Dunn font. But what we're going to have this say is love is brewing. The Ray Dunn font is really easy to learn once you get it. And it's just a little bit easier just to be able to use a paint pen like that and knock it out in one step rather than a stencil or anything like that. Now, once I have it all painted and ready, I do want to do a hanger and I kind of want it to be a like um, string on the back, but one that's kind of hidden. I don't have a lot of space above the top shelf on my coffee bar and I am just going to knot the twine and hot glue that on. I did go back later and put a couple staples over those knots just to kind of reinforce that a little bit to make, make it a little bit stronger, but this was that at that point. That's what I was like, you know, I think I went a little bit too glittery on this. I don't mind a few glitter accents on my coffee bar, but it really wasn't like the goal I was going to go for. So I'm going to kind of try to reuse these little stickers and I'm going to switch it up and do more of the wood hearts from Dollar Tree like I did before. I think it just kind of goes with the overall vibe of the project a little bit better. So these are kind of like the straight hearts, they're not like the curved ones. And I picked out like four of them in red, just kind of have them randomly going in different directions. And I'm just gonna attach those with hot glue to all of those. And I like that vibe a little bit better. This is how it turned out. And this is it hanging at the top of my coffee bar. And I absolutely love that saying, love is brewing. It is perfect for a coffee bar. And my snowman looks so festive in pink. 
Now for the next DIY, I just have one of these little pink coffee creamers from Dollar Tree, and it's so easy to remove the paint on the front. All you have to do is use a little fingernail polish remover, and you have a blank little creamer. And I'm gonna use a little glitter white snowflake on this one. A little touches of glitter I think are fine, just to kind of give a little touch of the snow, snowman theme that we're going for. But I thought a coffee creamer for the coffee bar would be perfect. Now I'm just using some of the little felt roses from Dollar Tree. They are like different sizes. I picked out like two small ones and one larger one. I'm gonna make it look like a little bouquet of red roses for Valentine's Day, but they don't really have stems. So I'm just gonna hot glue mine together, just kind of sitting them on top of the coffee creamer. So it'll be easy to remove this so I can reuse this little coffee creamer for another project. And quick, easy DIY for my coffee bar, the little pink creamer with a white sparkly snowflake on the front filled with some felt red roses for Valentine's Day. Now up next, I have another Dollar Tree DIY. This is just a Dollar Tree sign. It's kind of got like a little card on the top. It's got a little slot up there. I'm not really gonna use that feature. I just like the fact that it was kind of small and it says love. And I actually got this from like the regular home decor um, at Dollar Tree, not from Valentine's Day. They have a lot of items that say love. And then I'm just using some bright red acrylic paint and a little makeup sponge. And we're just gonna make the two hearts on the side bright red. Since I don't have any pink, I'm gonna mix some white to that red and um, come up with a custom shade of pink here. And then I'm going to do the whole rest of the sign, the love and the bottom bar in that light pink color. And just a quick, easy little DIY. I thought this would be perfect. It's the colors that we're using. I didn't want it to be all one shade, so I wanted to mix it up with the pink and red. And it's a nice short sign, so I think it's gonna be like really great below the uh, coffee bar sign we made and it's not really gonna cover or block any of the sign. So that's one reason why I picked this one out. Now for a little dose of snow on this, I'm also gonna use some white glitter snowflakes just because I don't really have anything small enough with a snowman with this, but we are gonna be DIYing a little snowman to put behind the little love sign. And I love how it turned out. So just one of the like little smaller white glitter um, foam stickers in each one. And this is how this one turned out. Here it is, our little love sign. So cute. I actually kind of pick up love signs year round whenever I see them at Dollar Tree because I always like to have tons of these available for crafting at Valentine's Day. Now this is a snowman we're gonna DIY, just a Christmas ornament that I got at Dollar Tree. And it looks a little rough, but it's got kind of the bones that I need. It's probably easier than making a snowman um, just because the little flocked um, body parts of the snowman are kind of nice. Um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and just start taking it apart and kind of redoing him a little bit to make him look fun and festive for Valentine's Day. Now I like the little red ha hat. It was kind of um, messed up so I'm gonna remove it but I'm gonna save it. We can always like kind of trim it up, make it look a little less rough and kind of put it on his head a little bit more so it'll be a little bit more rounded. I also don't really want like the traditional scarf so just using my heat gun to kind of loosen their glue, I'm just gonna carefully remove that. We can make a little Valentine's Day scarf, something that's gonna be going a little bit more with our theme. But for $1.25, these snowmen really aren't that bad. Now for this scarf, I thought it'd be cute to use some of the little pink heart ribbon from the Dollar Tree. Super cute. It's gonna give me some little hearts to decorate with. And I'm just gonna wrap that around his neck. I'm also gonna go ahead and take his arms off at this point too. Um, <clears throat> they're not great, but we can make those work. And then I just kind of wanted to wrap this around like a scarf. It was a little tricky though. So I was thinking, you know, I'm probably gonna have to do this in parts um, to make it kind of lay like a scarf. So that is exactly what we're gonna do. I'm just gonna trim off the two tails and then we can just attach it in three parts. That way I can get the scarf to lay exactly how I want. So I'm just gonna glue this part right around the snowman's neck. And then I can do the two little, you know, tail parts here, make them however long I want. I'm also gonna update like the little buttons on the front. It has like little black felt buttons, um, but I wanna kind of give that a Valentine's Day vibe as well. 
And I've really missed talking to you guys. You guys know I've been sick if you've been following my Facebook or my YouTube channel in the community tab. Your girl got really sick at Christmas. I went home um, for the first time in 10 years. We went back to Missouri for Christmas, got to spend it with our family, which was so much fun. But unfortunately, we all contracted a terrible virus that lasted 10, 11 days, like probably the sickest I've ever been. And so I've really missed crafting. Now I just put the little hat back on as you can see and then I'm just going to use one of those little pink hearts that we used for the scarf for the hat to decorate as well. The size was perfect. And then I'm just going to remove the little buttons here on the front. And I found some little pink like rhinestones at the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree and I thought those would make cute little buttons. But you could also use little hearts for that as well. That'd be cute. Aren't these cute? Look at these. You get all these for $1.25. And I'm just going to kind of replace the buttons that were on there with these little pink sparkly gems. Definitely um, the right color kind of coordinates with the little scarf, but extra sparkly as well to do the little buttons down the front of our little snowman. I'm going to do one right down here as well. And I think that looks pretty cute. Now I'm going to go ahead and kind of clean up my little arms we're going to put those back in they were kind of falling out on me anyway so i'm just going to kind of stab them back into the foam i don't really like the fact that they're like all brown though so i'm just going to give them a very light distressing with a little bit lighter brown um to kind of make them try to make them look a little bit more like wood and less like plastic so it'll be the dark brown and the light brown both and that's how you turned out our little valentine's day snowman out of a Dollar Tree Christmas ornament. And I actually am gonna display him behind that love sign that you saw before, kind of peeking out from behind. And I love the texture of him. He's really looks like snow. Now this is the next DIY. I picked up one of these little conversation heart signs at Dollar Tree and the color is perfect, but I didn't really like the way they did the conversation heart word on there. It just says love. And I thought we could do better than that. So I'm just gonna paint the front of mine white, leaving the sides pink, basically to kind of give myself a blank canvas and to cover up and mask that word, which is definitely gonna require a couple coats of white to cover that up. And then I'm gonna mix my own pink color with just red and white again, to try to get about the same color as it was before to do a pink conversation heart. And we're just gonna kind of DIY our own. I've got a fun saying that's gonna kind of go with like the snowman and the Valentine's Day theme. And so I'm just gonna paint that um, just using a makeup sponge from Dollar Tree. It works really well for painting small stuff like this. And a couple of coats to give us a nice like kind of chalky pink. And then I'm just gonna use my red Posca paint pen and draw this on, just trying to make like regular block letters that you would see on a real conversation heart. Nothing fancy. And it's gonna say, you make my heart melt, which I thought was really fun because, you know, it's Valentine's Day and, um, you know, a melting snowman as well. That's basically all I'm, all I'm gonna do because I do want it to look like a chalky little conversation heart. And I'm just gonna lay it on its side like this on my coffee bar. And I think it's really cute. I love that saying. I thought that was really a fun idea. You make my heart melt. No snowman or anything, but the saying kind of goes with it. Now up next, we're gonna take one of the little snowman mugs from the Dollar Tree and we're gonna make it into a little vase. They have these great little pink mums right now. I love the color on them and I thought they'd be perfect for this. Now the little snowman um, mug from the Dollar Tree is nice and large and this little foam piece, um, a floral foam is gonna fit in there nicely. I don't have to cut it or anything. And for the first batch of mums, I'm gonna use a total of two. I'm gonna cut this one down a little bit. These are gonna be like around the sides. I'm gonna want these to be a little bit shorter. Um, so I just cut these all individually and kind of stab those down in that foam. I really like that soft foam from the Dollar Tree a little bit better. It's a little bit easier to work with. This you kind of had to push a little bit. Then for the second bunch, I'm gonna leave them all attached but I'm gonna just cut it off because it's way too long. So I'm just cutting it below where they're all attached. And all I have to do now is just remove the little plastic tag on there. Kind of spread those out. They're already arranged perfectly and put that down right in the middle. 
So I'm having a little trouble going all the way through that foam like I needed to. So I kind of had to take it out a little bit to make it easier to work with. But nothing's going to like be stuck to the little snowman mug. So I can always use that again for like hot cocoa or coffee next year. And I really like the idea of bringing snowmen in because, you know, a lot of winter decor, you, may, you really have to take everything down after Christmas a lot of times. And this you can leave up all the way through Valentine's Day. Now for the little wood sticks, these are from Dollar Tree as well. I'm just going to do three of them. And it's just a little fun dose of Valentine's Day up there in the pink flowers, all displayed in this cute little snowman mug from Dollar Tree. I love it. It's a perfect little vase and it goes, of course, with my coffee theme as well. Now, I think these are new this year. I got these at Dollar Tree. I've never seen them before. They're little red felt heart trees with a little heart at the top as a tree topper. And I thought for $1.25, this was like saving you a lot of work. Mine looked pretty good. The only one that was kind of sticking up a little bit odd was the one on top. So I just kind of hot glued that down. I thought about adding ornaments to it, but I don't think it really needs it. So I'm just going to use another one of those little white glitter stickers for the tree topper to bring in a little dose of snow. But otherwise, we're going to kind of leave it as is. I think they have these in pink too. But how cute are these little felt heart trees? I love a good Valentine's Day tree. And I think this is going to look really cute. It's just the perfect size and a dose of red for my coffee bar. Next DIY, we're going to be using one of the little wood hearts from the Dollar Tree in the Valentine's Day section, some of the red and white snowflake napkins, and then I just want to make a base. I'm just going to use some craft wood from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to cut that down to size. Just I just need a tiny base, something that I can stand the heart on so that it can stand up on its own. So I just took that to my saw. I'm going to paint that that pretty salmon color to kind of go with the colors that we've used today. And I'm just going to paint the top and all four sides of my little base. Easy peasy. And the base sign worked really well. Now, I'm also going to do the edges of the heart. It's kind of got like a bevel pattern, which I'm going to cover most of that with decoupage. Um, but I do kind of want the sides not to be unfinished paint or unfinished wood. So I do those with the salmon color as well. I love decoupaging with napkins. Dollar Tree napkins are great for this. I always try to stock up every season. And it is a two-ply napkin, so you just have to simply remove that so you can get a good decoupage. I'm just going to rip like one little fourth out. And we're going to do a thin coat of Mod Podge since we're doing a napkin all over the heart. Trying to get the bevel parts too. And then carefully lay on our little red and white snowflake. A napkin. I thought it'd be perfect. It's a heart shape. And then we have kind of our snow theme. The colors are perfect. And I just smooth that on. I don't like to Mod Podge on top when I do napkins because I love the texture that you get from it. So once I get that dry, I'm just going to use a sanding block all around the edges. And I'm trying to like kind of avoid the bevel area so that it all sticks down all the way over to the pink sides. And I just sand off the excess napkin. Super cute and super easy. And now we can go ahead and attach that to the base of the sign. I was just going to use hot glue, but then I thought, you know, if I use a nail, it's going to be extra strong. So I like to get the little nails from the Dollar Tree. I'm just going to use a wood block underneath and just nail that through. And it'll be up like a spike that we can just spike the little heart on. I'm also going to use a little dot of hot glue to help glue that on. And this wood is soft enough that you can just put your little wood heart on there and gently push it down onto the stand. And we have a little custom Valentine's Day sign. Perfect size for where I need it on the coffee bar. And it definitely goes with our theme. I thought about adding a little snowman to the front, but I really loved the texture of the napkin. This is how mine turned out. Super cute little snowflake heart for Valentine's Day. And I just love how this coffee bar turned out. It is so much fun. If you're enjoying this video too, be sure to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. We're trying to get to 30,000 subscribers. Okay, next DIY, I designed this printable with AI, and I will share it below for you to print out as well. And I made mine a little bit smaller, six by six. Um, 
on this printout because I'm going to use one of the little Dollar Tree wood plank signs. I love these. These are so cool. They have sides, edges. It's about six inches by six inches. And so that is what I made my printable. I printed mine out on cardstock because it's so much easier to decoupage. And I'm just trying to figure out a way to kind of center my little sign on there so I can kind of cut it down to the size before we attach it to our sign. And sometimes my items on my coffee bar are a little bit shorter, so I kind of wanted just a fun little Valentine's Day sign, kind of canvas to go on the wall. So I'm just going to go ahead and trim that down, my cardstock, and make sure I got a good cut. Now it is a little thick, so we are going to have to use like a lot of Mod Podge to kind of glue that down. But I also didn't want the sides of this to be like raw wood, so I'm just going to use some white acrylic paint and then makeup sponge, and we're going to paint that first. It did kind of want to soak it up a little bit, so I did have to go over it with a second coat to get good coverage. Now time for the Mod Podge. I love doing printables for you guys. It just makes such a quick, easy DIY. And I told AI I really wanted a cute watercolor scene of a snowman for Valentine's Day. And I think this totally fit the bill. It totally goes with my theme. I'm just gonna lay the cardstock right on top, gluing that down. And I also like to Mod Podge over the top because it gives you kind of a nice like painting or canvas texture. Um, just one coat of Mod Podge and dry that and we have a cute little custom sign. You could always make this bigger to do a bigger DIY. You could even do this on a round if you wanted because you really would only be cutting off like the kind of watercolor effect of the square. But this is how mine turned out. I think he's super cute. And this is him hanging on the wall above my coffee bar. Now, they've had these a couple years at Valentine's Day. This is the first year I've been able to find it. It's like a little candy dish with like, um, I got the pink one. I think they also had the red one with the heart on top, but it's a really nice size for $1.25 from the Dollar Tree. And we're going to do a fun little hot cocoa DIY. Hot cocoa is great for winter. So I thought this idea was really fun. We're going to take some mini marshmallows and fill this up. So this is going to be a little decor piece for the coffee bar, but it's also going to be functional. I'm not going to do too many, about two thirds of the way, I think and put this on it's airtight so it should be able to keep my um marshmallows fresh and then i just wanted to do a little heart tag so i picked up some of the little chalkboard tags from dollar tree and i'm just going to use the back of it because i do want mine to be red to go with one of my red and pink color scheme and so i'm just going to paint the back and i just do that with some bright red acrylic and a little makeup sponge super easy and then i can kind of write whatever i want on the tag and i have the perfect idea i'm gonna have it say snowman kisses i thought that'd be really fun my thinner posca white paint pen definitely needs to be replaced but that's okay because it's a, i'm just gonna make some big fluffy letters with my larger posca paint pen um i love these these work so much better than any of the paint pens i've ever used before and I'm just going to make it say snowman kisses. You can see how vibrant that is against the red. And then I have a little bit of room on the top of my heart. So I decided to kind of like, you know, freehand on a little snowflake on each side. Just a very simple one because I didn't have a lot of space. And now we can tie that little snowman kisses heart tag around the little candy dish. There's kind of a groove there. So I just take some twine and knot that around. And then I can use the rest of it to tie it on. And I think this is so fun. It brings in the snowman theme. And I think those little mini marshmallows do kind of look like snowman kisses. <laughs> and I just tie that on, removing the excess twine. And this DIY, functional DIY, is ready to go. I'm going to put this on the bottom shelf of my coffee bar so it'll be nice and accessible for hot cocoa because I love hot cocoa as well. Um, my son is still sick. I sent him back to college. I felt so bad, but college was starting. He had required stuff this week and oh my goodness, this virus is just really almost taking us out. <laughs> now for the next DIY, I wanted to do a string of snowballs for the front of one of my little shelves on my coffee bar. So I have some of these little Christmas ornaments from the Dollar Tree. These are like white yarn wrapped around just like a foam ball they'd be really easy to recreate but I was able to find these before they got rid of all the Christmas decorations and I tried to save all my snowman stuff for after Christmas since I can leave it up longer 
and I just cut some twine down to the size of my shelf and my coffee bar and I just cut all the ornament hangers in half that way I can just use the string on the top to tie these on it's going to make it easier to move these around to get them centered perfectly but I just tied my first one on the middle I had a total of six of these but I'm only going to use five because I always like to do odd numbers on my like pennant banners or garlands and so I usually do three or five because these shelves are not very big but I thought the snowballs would be a really cute touch to kind of go with the snowman theme and I'm going to hang these from the top um, shelf of my coffee bar and so I just tie them double knot them all on and then just kind of cut off the excess ribbon so you don't really see that easy peasy little snowball garland ready for the coffee bar and this is how it looks hanging on. I just use a little dot of hot glue on the edge of both of my twines, um, just as a simple way to hang that without having to do nails or anything like that in my shelves. Now for the bottom shelf, I also wanted to do like a little pennant banner. And so I found this little wood heart, like kind of chain um, sign from the Dollar Tree. And I thought these little hearts would be perfect. They do have like other size hearts as well. These are a little bit larger than them, but I kind of like the style of them. So again, I like to use odd numbers and they're kind of larger. So I think three of these is going to be plenty. I'm going to do two of mine in that like salmon color we've been using of acrylic. And I just paint those simply with a makeup sponge, easy peasy. One coat is fine on that one. Just making sure I don't block any of the little holes there and I have a good even coat. Now for the third one, it's gonna be the one in the middle. We're just gonna do bright red on that one to kind of go with our color scheme. And it's gonna be a nice contrast to the snowball garland on the shelf above it. Now the red definitely required a couple coats because it soaked into that wood very much. And to get that bold color of red, I just went over it with a second coat. So this is how it's gonna look with the red heart in the middle. Now all I have to do is string this up. Whenever I use a flat wood ornament like this and I'm making a pennant banner, I like to tie it to the string. That way I can move it side to side and it's gonna lay flat. And you know, whenever you buy the little wood ornaments from the Dollar Tree, they come with like the perfect size twine. It's the perfect length and they're really super skinny so they're easy to work with. So I had some from a little Christmas package and I'm just gonna simply tie this on. And then I have the twine that I can tie on to my other twine that I cut the shelf, the size of my shelf. Once I get those all tied on there, and then I can go back and tie these onto the string. Just kind of finding the middle, I can tie the heart on. But again, just like the snowball, since I'm tying them on, I can always move it side to side to get everything centered properly. And just cutting off the excess twine, but make sure you don't cut it off too short because you don't want your ornament falling off. And this was such a quick, easy little garland to go on the front. I think it's going to look really cute. I can kind of hide the twine behind the hearts like that, kind of making it, uh, the hearts kind of be the uh, main display. This is how it turned out, and this is how it looks to attach to that shelf. Super cute. And I also have my little um, cup rack underneath. And I have three little Valentine's Day mugs that I think are going to look perfectly there. These are some of my Valentine's Day Ray Dunn collection. I have a red, white, and pink one. And so perfect with my color scheme. And all the sayings are, you know, nice and Valentine's. Be mine, soulmate, and love. I actually got, I think, the pink love one at Goodwill. Um, you can actually find some really good um, Ray Dunn stuff at um, goodwill occasionally if you have your eyes open but this is how they look hanging and the coffee bar is complete i do have more snowman valentine's day diys for you but let me give you a little tour of my coffee bar i'm so glad i got it done um, my house is still so christmasy because i've been so sick so i still had gingerbread and i really wanted you know something a little bit different so I have my reds and pinks. I'm all ready for Valentine's Day, but I'm still decorating with winter with all the little snowman touches. 
And this is how I put it all together. I think it turned out really cute. What do you guys think about my little coffee bar? I love the love is brewing. I think that sign kind of sets the stage for everything else. But all my pinks and reds and whites work really well together with a little touch of snowman thrown in here and there just for fun. I love it and I hope that you do too. It definitely took me longer than I think it normally would. I worked on this two days. Um, I don't think I'm just quite up to it yet. Um, just coming out of this illness, but we got it done. And this is how it looks from a distance. Now for the next DIY, I thought it'd be fun to do a fun little snowman sign for Valentine's Day. So I'm gonna use a Dollar Tree wood round and a little snowman wood sign to whip something up, something fun that I can use probably in my kitchen for Valentine's Day. I found this great cardstock at Dollar Tree and they had the perfect color of pink. I don't think I've ever used this cardstock before. It has a really interesting texture on it and it's super thick. I loved it and it's the perfect size for the Dollar Tree wood rounds as you can see. I just use an ink pen and kind of sketch mine out and then I'm just going to go in and cut it out. It's really kind of hard to cut a perfect circle but I figure I can always sand the edges to kind of give me that perfect cut after I get it on there, but I thought it'd be easier to cut it down now just because the cardstock was so thick. I'm also gonna have to use a pretty hefty coat of Mod Podge to be able to attach the cardstock since it was so thick, but I do really like the texture on it. It's kind of cool. It's kind of got like a fabric texture, but it's glossy at the same time. And I just glue mine on with the Mod Podge like that. Um, wiping off any excess Mod Podge and then sanding the edges. It gave me that perfect circle that I was looking for. I'm not gonna frame it out or anything like that. I'm just gonna kind of leave it as is because I am stacking Dollar Tree signs. Now, it was so thick, it was kind of hard to like poke the holes for the hanger. I had to kind of poke from behind first because um, you really can't feel through that and it's really kind of hard to poke through it as well. But I just do that with a little Dollar Tree Cricut weeder and then I'm going to use some Dollar Tree twine and feed it in from the back and not some twine in the front just to make a new hanger. It did have a hanger, but I kind of cut it. They The way they're making those wood round hangers now is like um, all attached, but I don't really need all that. So I'm just going to do a simple hanger like that. Now, this is just the standard wood snowman they have every year at um, Christmas time and winter. And I don't really need the hole in the top because I'm going to attach that to the other sign. So I just fill mine in with a little spackle first. And just like the snowman before, we're going to paint it white. The difference is, is that this is wood instead of the MDF. And so the paint definitely gives you a little bit better coverage. I'm going to do the snowman face and body. And I'm going to have to kind of do the scarf as well just because it's kind of in the way. Um, just trying to get any little dots of um, white all blended in there. And then I'm just going to use some bright red for the little stocking hat of our snowman. Since we're doing the pink, I thought um, on the sign, I thought we could do a lot of red on the little snowman. And I don't know the simplest way to paint these. I was trying to use a makeup sponge. I thought that might be a little cleaner, but I was kind of getting a little bit on my snowman here and there. So I kind of switch it up between a small brush and my little makeup sponge. And we're gonna paint the scarf bright red as well. Just trying to keep that off my snowman. And paint that a nice solid color of red. Then I'm just gonna mix the orange, um, pumpkin orange with white again to give me that pastel orange color that we used for the snowman for the coffee bar. And we're gonna paint the little carrot nose that light orange color. I'm just gonna use my black paint pen and we're gonna draw on some simple little snowman eyes. I try to leave a little eye shine on those, but I'm gonna have to add to it because I kind of covered them up. And then like a little dot coal mouth, little white eye spots and kind of going over my red, making sure I didn't have any, you know, super blotchy areas. I just wanted to do a fun little whimsical snowman Valentine's Day sign just to give me a little smile with Valentine's Day decor. Now it's time to attach my little snowman. I'm going to do a hefty amount of hot glue on the back and glue that down onto that cardstock. I really loved that cardstock. I'm from Dollar Tree. I don't know why I've never used this one before. Um, I think I've 
seen it before, but um, I really liked it. Now, since it's kind of a solid color, I thought we would break, kind of break that up, bring a little Valentine's Day in with some of their little wooden hearts. I love these. I was trying to decide if I wanted to do red and pink or just red. Then I decided I think I just want to do red because I already have like the pink sign. And I'm going to do like three little hearts on each side. These are kind of the hearts that kind of curve to the side. But they're like painted on both sides. So um, I can kind of mirror them, which I thought looked cute. And we're just going to glue those down with like the larger heart in the middle. To give me a little dose of Valentine's Day. We are going to be decorating the snowman more to make him ready for Valentine's Day as well. But I kind of wanted to get the base coat on him done. I was having trouble with my um, dryer. I think I'm going to have to get a new dryer from Amazon because my blue one is kind of giving out on me. Now, to kind of make the hat pop, I thought it would look good to kind of outline it with white, kind of give it like a snowy feel and kind of make it pop a little bit. So I just do like the brim of the hat and then like the top edge of the hat too, kind of sketching that out, the little ball on the end of the hat to give it a little bit of structure. I'm going to do the same thing down here on the little scarf, kind of trying to make it look like a scarf with like, you know, the different parts like kind of wrapped around. I thought about kind of drawing the other part of the red scarf on the snowman, but I decided not to. And then just doing some simple little hearts with my white paint pen all over the scarf. And then I'm going to do the same thing here on his stocking hat to make him look like he's ready for Valentine's Day. Since I outlined everything else, I decided to outline the little wood hearts with the white paint pen as well. Now they must stain these little um, pieces from Dollar Tree because as you can see, like the white paint like really blended in. Then I used my red paint pen to do some little buttons and I decided to give him little heart shaped buttons down the front as well. And I'm gonna have to go over all of my hearts again with another coat of my white paint pen because as you can see, that white paint just was really soaking into those. Kind of a totally different effect than the red paint that I used on the snowman. Now I kind of wanted to give a little bow and I thought that'd be a cute way to kind of decorate the hanger on this to kind of make it look a little bit more festive. And I found some of this red and white Valentine's Day ribbon from Dollar Tree. I thought this would be perfect. So I just put it on and I'm just going to tie a simple bow right at the top of the hanger. And I kind of want like the tails of the bow to kind of hang down on the hanger. It's going to provide a little decorative touch, but it's also still going to be a functional hanger. So I just cut that little tails down to size and they kind of wanted to go all over the place. So I'm just going to kind of tack mine down a little bit um, with a little, just a tiny dot of hot glue um, just to kind of make those stay in place. And if you wanted to, you could always frame out the sign. I think it would be really cute, but I kind of wanted just something really simple. So I think we're going to leave the edges as is. And this is how it turned out. Our little pink snowman sign for Valentine's Day. I think I'm going to hang this on the side of my cabinets in my kitchen where you first come in. I think he's super cute. What do you guys think about my little Valentine's Day snowman? I love him. He's just adorable. I love all the little heart touches. You could also use like a pink heart scrapbook paper for a background. That'd be really cute. Hey guys, I also wanted to tell you, I have a private Facebook group. I have it linked in the description below. You'll get to see when I post new videos, and you'll get to see what everybody's been working on. I also have Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest, and my handle is Crafty Beach on YouTube. Back to the DIYs. I'm going to DIY one of the little snowman wreath forms, and I'm going to do it with macrame cord. Now, I got some pink and some white. I ended up only using one of the packages of white. It actually went way further than I thought to do a little macrame snowman. I've never done this, and I was a little intimidated. I'm going to start here right here where the snowman head and body kind of come together. Um and tie that, kind of knotting it on the back just to attach it first. Now, the tricky part about this was winding it around because I had such a big ball of macrame cord that it kind of made it awkward. So I was trying to um, kind of see if I could do it like several times around and do it like that, but it was a little cumbersome. And I don't know if there's a better method for this. And I was like, you know, I don't want this to take 
absolutely forever. So what I ended up doing was just cutting it down into a shorter piece. That way it would be easier for pulling it in and out. And that's what we're going to do. But I just wanted to wrap the two little metal parts together, just wrapping all the way around. I want like the snowman head and the snowman body um, to be white. So that's why we're doing that with the white macrame. And I was a little intimidated um, by this project. It did take, um, it did take some time, this DIY, um, speeding this way up for you. But I do want you guys to see kind of all the steps that I did. And I'm kind of get trying to keep this as tight as I can, but not too tight until I get over here, the little arm areas. And I kind of have a smaller area I need to go through. So I put a little hot glue on the tip to make kind of a, like a little needle out of the macrame so I can get that right in there exactly where I want. I want to try to cover as much as the reform with that white macrame cord as I can. I've done this with like Dollar Tree rope and like um, unwound rope before. But this is definitely the skinniest thing I've wrapped something like this with. That's why I was like, oh my gosh, it's going to take forever. And, you know, the project did end up probably taking me over an hour, but I love how it turned out. Now, this is how far that piece of macrame got me. So I just knotted it. I want to have any knots on the back so I can kind of like hot glue down the um, tip so it doesn't like stick out for the front. And then I'm going to take that same macrame cord that we were using before. I'm going to try to cut down a piece, a little shorter piece again. And we can start right there where we finished. I do want my knot to be hidden on the back. So I kind of flip mine over and knot that. And then we can keep winding this around. There are like little crossbars that kind of stick out a little bit, even though I've wound it. Um, but they're not too noticeable. So I think they're okay. And as you can see, to do it, I'm just having to take the whole ball of macrame cord and going in and out and in and out of the circle um, to be able to wrap that around. And it really wasn't too bad. I just put on, you know, a good YouTube video and crafted away. I'm just going over the little tricky arm part here again. And this one wasn't too bad. And I'm going to keep wrapping this, trying to cover the rest of my little snowman body. And I like the effect it gave me. I'm kind of glad I did the, the wrapped thing. I'm also going to wrap the hat. That's why we're also going to be using that bright pink macrame cord, which I was really excited to find at Dollar Tree. I think it's really cool. And I thought that'd be really fun for Valentine's Day. Now, when I get to this part of the snowman, it was a little tricky. I just cut it down again because um, I'm going to have this piece end and I thought it'd be easier, but I just kind of feed it through um, and then kind of knot everything here together. And then I come in with my next piece and knot that on the back as well. This is another piece of the macrame cord I cut down and we can start working on the snowman head. I do want to kind of mask this area, so I kind of just string it together, top and bottom. I am going to do a little scarf on my snowman, so it'll kind of cover that area too. And we're just going to keep wrapping the snowman with a macrame cord. At first, I wanted to do like a fancy like macrame pattern or something like that. But in the end, I decided just to wrap it. And I'm glad I did because that probably would have been super time consuming. And I'm just doing the left side of the hat. The hat's on there kind of like a little bit crooked. But I'm going to try not to interfere with the hat too much, but just kind of keep trying to wind that circle for the top of the snowman head. So I get it like a, as tight as I can to like the little snowman there. And then I put some hot glue on the end so I can kind of feed it through any tight spaces I might need to. I was trying to keep this as tight as I can um, to cover all of the wreath form, but working around all of my obstacles of the hat as well. And then we're just going to wrap the top part of the hat as well. And even like the brim of the hat, which was a little skinny, but I'm, I'll show you what I did with that. We're going to make that work. So almost done with the macrame wrapping on this one. I'm speeding this up like, you know, like six times. <laughs> and I didn't kind of quite cut this one quite long enough to make it all the way around. So I just knotted on the back and not a new cord because I just need to finish off this last little portion here of my snowman wreath. And, you know, the macrame cord would be durable enough to, you know, 
hold up outside, I think. I don't think I'm going to use mine outside. I think I'm going to use this in my entryway right next to my front door. I think it'll look super cute there. And I just kind of go around the little neck area of the snowman as well, making sure I have everything nice and tight. And I just tie a knot here. I get on the back trying to hide all of my knots on one side and not leaving too much of the twine left over so I can kind of glue that down and make it look neat. Now it's time for the hat. Look at this. I got this in like pink and I got it in like turquoise. I think I even got one in purple. They have these great colors and I love the macrame cord from Dollar Tree. They're so fun to craft with. I've made so many things with it. So just like before, I'm going to kind of cut down a, you know, reasonable portion, I thought. But then I was like, you know what? I don't need to cut down anything because I'm just going to be wrapping around the hat. I don't have to go in and out like I did the snowman. So I made that part easier. Where the hat and the brim comes together, that's where I'm just going to knot it um, on the back and then just simply wrap it. So this is why I didn't have to cut it down. I can just simply wrap it around, trying to keep it tight. I just kind of, you know... Um, grip it, kind of push it down. I don't want any of the wreath form showing through. I just want a cute little um, bright pink snowman hat for Valentine's Day. Now, once you get to the end, it's a little bit tricky. They have like two of the little crossbars going straight up, um, but they're not like wide enough to really be using very much. So I'm just going to have to use a little hot glue here at the top to glue the macrame cord to the actual frame. And then I kind of glue a second row just kind of to itself, just to cover those little notches that were sticking out at the top because they were kind of in the way. I cut it down to size, kind of blending uh, my seam in the middle and gluing down my macrame cord. Any of the little knots, the little fibers, I try to glue those down to the back so they don't, they're not visible from the front. Now, for the brim of the hat, I wasn't sure how I was going to be able to pull that off. Just trying to clean up any excess hot glue I have up there. But I kind of decided to use, like, the structure that was already there. And this is how I ended up doing it. I'm just going to tie that off with, like, my knot there in the back. And we're going to simply wrap it. And once I get to the end, I'm just going to have to use a little hot glue to kind of make it kind of stay in place and not slip off the very end here. Um, but then I'm going to also go back and double wrap it and that's going to make it thicker, a little bit more substantial to kind of go with the scale of the hat. And then I just knot that off on the back, um, again, and I kind of realized I probably shouldn't have cut the first one off because I kind of tied it to itself. So when I do the other side, I just left the tail on there. I wrapped it, hot glued it to the end and then go back, wrap it again to make it bigger and then I can tie that against the twine that we started with to knot it on the back just to kind of avoid more than one knot and glue down the little pieces to clean that up as well. Now, I didn't really like the fact that the arms were kind of exposed, so I thought we could probably wrap those as well. So I'm going to kind of do the same technique. We're just going to be using some Dollar Tree like brown twine. And I'm just going to do one piece of the little stick hand or arm at a time. I'm going to do the side arms first. I thought that'd be easier. I just started by knotting that on and wrapping that around, attaching that with hot glue here at the end um, to try to keep that on there and um, trimming off the excess, trying to clean everything up. I'm a little concerned if this is going to stay on or not. I guess we will see. If it doesn't, I'll have to go back and kind of add some more hot glue. But this is how I did it for the first um, arm. I did both of the little branches first. Then I'm going to start here at the base and then go back and wrap it around for the longer part of the little arm. Or a snowman hand, I guess. And the same way, just wrapping that. And I'm glad that I wrapped them. I think it did make it look a little bit better. But you might want to wrap it side up because you can't really see what's happening. I had mine kind of on there upside down. So this time I'm going to kind of try to knot it so I can kind of see a little bit better. And i um, just going to do it the same way. I just wrap the um, little top and bottom parts first, and then we'll do the longer part. That way everything is wrapped. I did think about putting like some white fabric or something behind it to make the snowman like an actual snowman, but I really kind of like the outline effect. And so I'm glad that I left it like that. I think it turned out kind of cool. 
So for the final part, I'm just starting at the base again and knotting it, gluing it, wrapping it around and gluing the tip. I thought about making him hold something, but I couldn't really find anything small enough to put in his hands. Now for the little scarf, I'm going to use just some red and white and pink heart ribbon from the Dollar Tree. The only thing I didn't like was the uh, metallic border. So I'm just going to trim mine off. Um, you can use whatever you have. I thought about using like the pink baby blankets from the Dollar Tree, or I wish I knew how to like <laughs> knit or crochet. You could use that pink macrame cord and kind of do a custom one. That'd be really cute. And I was like, girl, you don't have time to learn how to do that. <laughs> so I just do the part that's wrapped around the neck first. And then I'm going to do like the little tails of the scarf separately. So I'm going to cut two more pieces of that ribbon down. And then we're going to cut the little metallic ribbon off. I just didn't think that really went with the vibe of the project. I just wanted the ribbon, not the glitz. But the pink is a very similar color to the pink in the hat. So I think we can make that work. And I'm going to have it hanging where like both sides of the tail face front. So you'll get that beautiful pattern. Kind of make it look like it's knotted around the little snowman's neck. Now, I thought like maybe a little something to finish it off. I do a little pink wood um, heart right there where the scarf kind of comes together for a little decorative touch. Then I thought I kind of wanted to do something with a little snowman hat. So I decided to do like a white macrame heart on there. I thought that'd be super cute. So this is how I'm doing it. I'm just doing hot glue in the shape of a heart and laying the macrame cord on there and I think that turned out cute. You could leave it just like that with just the outline of the heart and I did think about doing that but then I decided to fill mine all the way in and I'm just doing that a section at a time, hot gluing that, just going next to the outline next to it until we fill in the entire heart and I'm glad I decided to add this to it because I think it turned out really sweet. And again, I was thinking, man, I really want to do the scarf and this macrame cord. I have no idea how to make a scarf out of this. But I didn't really like all my different colors of pink, so I decided to switch up my pink art to the red heart, just so I didn't have so many different colors of pink on my DIY. It doesn't really need a hanger or anything like that. I'm just going to use the structure of the wreath form to hang it. And this is how mine turned out. I already have it hanging in my entryway. I think he's super sweet. Definitely got a little touch of Valentine's Day with that pink hat and that really cute red, pink, and white heart scarf. And I love the texture of him. This is probably the favorite way that I've ever DIY'd this wreath for him. I think it turned out really cute. Now, coming up next, we're going to switch it up and do the conversation heart theme for some Dollar Tree DIYs. I had a great time putting these together. I think they turned out really cute, and I hope you, that you enjoy. So, for the first DIY, I'm going to use one of these large jars from the Dollar Tree. I love these things. They're so versatile. I'm actually going to make mine into a little conversation heart vase by putting another little glass Dollar Tree candle holder down inside to kind of form a vase within a vase so that I can fill it up with some of the candy hearts. Now this particular one was just the right size, but I don't really need the handle or anything on there. So I just went ahead and took that one off. And the jar itself is really a kind of a nice size. I thought I could make a really cute little Valentine's Day flower arrangement. Now I go ahead and put it in there because I kind of need to bury it down within the conversation hearts and this also is beneficial because you're going to use less of the little candy hearts because you're only filling up the sides even though like the appearance of the floral arrangement it's going to look like the whole thing is filled with the little candy hearts now this was good because it took less but also a little tricky because you kind of have to like put them in there kind of like piece by piece as you can see me doing and I was trying to like randomly do the colors and stuff like that. You'll see today we're going to be using lots of the conversation hearts. It seems like green and yellow are like the most common colors for some reason. I had to keep opening bags to get like different colors. But these are all your standard colors. I was not able to find any of the conversation hearts at Dollar Tree, even though they normally carry some. Maybe not brand name, but 
they had nothing. So I had to go to Target to get mine. Um, they actually had a good sale going on, 25% off on these. So that helped with these DIYs. But both of the jars and the florals that you see there are um, both from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to go ahead and keep filling it until I get to like the rim of the little jar or candle holder that's inside. Don't necessarily want to have any fall inside, but I want it to look really full like that. Now for the florals, I'm just going to take a little piece of that floral foam from the Dollar Tree. Um, I had a scrap piece that fit perfectly inside. And then these are the florals that we're using. They're kind of like a pink and yellow. And I thought that would go nice with like the pink and the yellow little conversation hearts. So we're going to use a couple um, sprigs of these to kind of fill it up. I want it to look really full. Initially, I wanted to do like a pink rose, um, but I couldn't find anything like that at Dollar Tree. The only thing I could really find was some really premium like red rose uh, arrangements like at Dollar Tree Plus. And that totally wouldn't go. So I like the colors on these. I think it's going to work well. It's going to look really nice and springy and fun for Valentine's Day. So I was able to use almost two. Um, I think I used all but one on this one and filled it completely up. Now, since it was a jar, it has like the screw on part on the top and I kind of want to mask that. So I'm going to use some of this adorable pink heart ribbon from the Dollar Tree and we're just going to cut that down to size and just glue that over the little screw part there of the jar just to kind of give it a little bit more of a finished thing. And we're going to be using a lot of like powder pink in some of these DIYs. I tried to do like a, um, a lot of pastels and conversation hearts. And I think they turned out really adorable for Valentine's Day decor. I have done some conversation heart DIYs before and I really liked them. So I thought this would be a great theme to decorate some areas of my home for Valentine's Day. And this is how our first DIY turned out. Our little spring floral arrangement with a jar full of candy hearts. You can kind of tell already, a lot of green in those. I wonder why there's a more of one color than the others, but isn't that so pretty? I think it turned out adorable. Now for the next DIY, I found a, a soft pink candle holder from Dollar Tree, and we're also gonna use one of their little floral combs. I wanted to do a candy heart tree, and so I kinda want it to be pointy at the top and not cut off like the foam is, and you're also gonna be able to see through the candy hearts, and I don't want you to be able to see the styrofoam. So we're gonna use some of the white glitter cardstock from Dollar Tree, and we're gonna wrap it. It's gonna solve both of those problems. So I'm just kinda trying it out for size. I'm gonna go ahead and glue down the first corner here onto the styrofoam comb and wrap it until I get like a point at the top instead of that blunt end, but just enough to kinda cover it where I can kinda do a straight seam here, right here on the back. So I trim off my excess cardstock and this was actually a lot easier than I thought it was going to be, and it turned out so cute. So I do a bead of hot glue, just rolling that on top to glue that down. And I do have a seam again, but it doesn't really matter. It's all going to be covered up with some of those little conversation hearts. Then I'm going to go ahead and trim off the excess paper um, right here at the bottom, just trimming it down until I get to the foam. And at this point, it's pretty lightweight, but in the end, it's actually a pretty substantial piece with a lot of weight and stuff to it. I'm going to start at the very top. I didn't get my point directly um, smooth, but we're going to cover that up with candy heart, so I think it'll be okay. So starting at the top, I'm just going to take my first one and kind of cover up that like area that was kind of open. And only two is going to fit on the first row. And I'm just using hot glue, making sure to squeeze that down to make sure it's good and secure. Um, they will stay on paper, but as you can see, you definitely have to make sure they are stuck before you like kind of stop with each one. So I made sure I got each one attached really well. And then I am hot gluing them around. This row has room for about three. Um, you have that white glitter paper behind it, so it's okay if you have some gaps. 
Now for the third row, as you can see, I'm kind of alternating them so they'll kind of fit in the grooves from the one on top and just trying to fit that in going around. It's not always gonna work out perfectly, but um, it was actually pretty easy as long as I kept a row at a time to build it and kind of nestle the next one and then just start going around it. As you can see, I do a dot of hot glue. I found the easiest way for me to put it together was to put the hot glue directly on um, the paper and you can get away with doing a couple at a time, but again, you have to really make sure that you have it glued down because you don't want those popping off later, right? So we're gonna speed this way up because this was a little bit time consuming. I would say, I think it took me about 30 minutes to glue all the little conversation hearts to the tree. Um, I know they're candy and we are DIYing with them. And so this one, um, we are gonna be able to seal a little bit to try to make this a little bit more permanent. And we've got about half of it done. What I'm doing is just trying to um, alternate colors. I don't really wanna match like the colors to the sides or to the top like above it. And so trying to just keep it really random. There was like, I don't know, like five different colors. And I just kept building this. Now it turned out so cute that I'm kind of tempted to go craft some more of these and kind of display them together. I just love the way they look on the little candle holders. Um, I did Valentine's Day trees last year with like a more glam look, but this is definitely a sweet look. I really think this would be cute paired with your regular decor or you could mix it in with other Valentine's Day stuff. It's super sweet and of any candy for Valentine's Day, this is the one that reminds me of Valentine's Day, which was why I was really surprised that I couldn't find any at Dollar Tree. Um, they were kind of perplexed why they didn't have any as well. Now Target also had the mini conversation hearts that come in the little boxes. I'm not sure if they're the same size. They might be because these are called tiny conversation hearts too. But these are the Brock's brand and um, they're pretty good with writing on most of them. And I just keep going until I really have no more room. If I can fit it a little bit crooked here on the bottom, I do. Otherwise, I just leave it and I just filled it up as much as I could. So this is what the little conversation heart tree looks like at this point. And I want to be able to reuse this candle holder later, so I'm not actually going to attach it to it, but you totally could if you wanted to. At this point, it's nice and heavy duty. It's no longer foam and paper. I do want to seal it to make it a little bit more permanent. So I have some like matte finish sealer spray paint, and I am just going to do one quick spray of paint all over to kind of seal that. I was a little worried that the ink on the little conversation hearts might bleed, but it definitely didn't. And I did, do think that it helped, um, you know, seal it, make it a little bit more permanent. Some of the DIYs I was able to seal it today, but some of them I didn't really need to, but this is how it's gonna go on my candle holder. And this is how it turned out. Now you can see the one reason I wanted to cover the cone is because you can see the little gaps in between and that white glitter paper looks really cute back there, but you could use like white poster board as well. And it definitely gave me a great cone shape on this, which made it look really sweet. You can kind of see how big it is there um, from that small cone. If you're enjoying today's video, be sure to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. We're trying to get to 30,000 subscribers. Okay, next Valentine's Day DIY. I have one of these little Dollar Tree frames and I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the hanger from the side because I'm gonna be making a vertical project. I usually save those for other DIYs. I chose this one because it had the light wood um, frame and I thought that would work well. I do want the background to be white though and I want it to be like really white. So I just grabbed some white cardstock and it's almost the perfect size like a regular eight and a half by 11 but I did need to trim it down ever so slightly and that's gonna give me a great white background without having to paint it and covering up that dark wood. And I wanna do a really fun like candy heart collection um, hanging like you would kind of see 
um, when you display a collection of scientific things like bugs. I've done it with shells, different things like that. And so I'm just going to put a layer of Mod Podge all over the back. I try to do kind of a thick coat because the cardstock is a little bit heavy duty. And then just lay that right on top. I'm not going to seal the top of it. I don't think it really needs it. And I really like the matte finish of the paper. I just wanted a plain white background on this. I thought about painting the frame light pink, but I decided against it, but I think it would look really cute too if you did that with a pastel. But I'm just making sure it's all smoothed down and it can dry, but I also need to start mapping out kind of where I want to put all the candy hearts because I want it to look like a grid. So I had to break out my ruler and first I'm gonna kind of find like the middle of the sign so I can center the first row. And then I had to kind of calculate about how much I need. I went like one and a half inches and I'm gonna go down and do as many rows as I think is gonna look really good. And so that's like the center line. And then I was trying to decide how many I wanted. I was thinking whether I wanna do three across or if I want to do a five across. And I decided to do five. I think it looks good that way. But it's just a matter of kind of mapping it out. I was having to use my brain here for some math skills. I was like, okay, yeah. And try to make it even. I'm just wanting them to be kind of centered, but I want them to all be equal distance away from each other. And I think mine was like one and a quarter inches apart, side to side was what I decided. And so I have my first row mapped out. And I think that's going to be really good. Now I'm going to have to go ahead and do the same thing here for the other rows. And I can kind of use um, the dots that I have on there as guide. I guess another way you could do this is you could design your grid with dots on it, print it out on the cardstock, and then you wouldn't have to do all the measuring. That might be an easier way to do it. But I already have it on there, so I'm just going to do some calculating. Put my little dots on there so I'll know exactly where to glue each one of the little candy hearts down. So I think that process probably took longer than like the entire DIY. Now I do want to like alternate colors if I can. As you can see, I'm kind of getting down to the greens and the yellows. That's what I was kind of meaning by there's way more of those than everything else. But I do want a variety in each row. I don't really want to do white because I do have the white background on this one. But just kind of going ahead and lay them all out so that I can kind of map it out before I glue them down. And just trying to do a variety. I did do probably more green than anything else. That's when I realized I had an overabundance of green. But I wanted to spread them out as well. So we're going to do a total of five and we did four rows. So now I can kind of move them out of the way so I can see my dots exposed there and I can go ahead and start gluing these on. You can do a couple at a time without your hot glue drying if you have a hot glue gun. I went ahead and did all five dots because I thought I could easily just move those, pushing those down, making sure they're glued tightly. If they do pop off, you can always um, put another drop of hot glue and get them attached pretty easily. I'm glad I decided to do like the white cardstock on the back because you can see how bright that white is. And it would have taken quite a few coats of white paint to get that good of coverage, I think. So there's our second row. I just glue it down. That's what I mean about the measuring process probably taking longer than the entire DIY because this part was super easy. And it's just such a cute, easy little DIY. You could, um, hang this kind of lean it against a wall I think that's what I'm going to kind of do kind of lean it against the wall with some of my Valentine's Day decor and it's just super easy but super sweet our little Valentine heart sign and you can see all the little messages on there they don't stamp them on there very evenly do they I don't guess they ever really did <laughs> but I did try to make sure they all had words on them and that the words were like all pointed up very few of them didn't have words but there were a few that didn't 
And this is how this one turned out. I think it was really fun. Now for the next DIY, I'm gonna use a Dollar Tree vase and another pastel candle holder. This one is kind of that bluish green color that I thought really looked nice with all those green conversation hearts we have there. And I am gonna go ahead and attach this one because I'm gonna have a candle in it. So I do want this one to be sturdier than I did the tree. So whenever I glue glass, I really like to use like E6000. And so I have a little tiny bottle of that, which I'm gonna put right around the edges where the vase is gonna come into contact with the candle holder. And I just do a thin bead all the way around. And then I'm also gonna use a combination of hot glue to kind of get it glued on for right now. I do a rather thick coat inside. I don't really want the glues to mix together, but just enough to kind of catch it, hold it on there until the E6000 has time to dry. But E6000 and glass and like ceramics like this, it works really well. You're gonna get a really nice permanent bond. I'm just wiping off any excess of the E6000 that might have seeped out from placing that on there. And this is what we have so far. Super cute. I wanted to fill this up with conversation hearts too, so I'm just gonna go ahead and just start filling it up. If you wanted to use less of the conversation hearts, you could always put a smaller uh, cylinder or candle holder upside down inside of it. I'm gonna go around the edges, kind of like we did with the flower arrangement, but I have plenty of these, so I'm just gonna go ahead and fill this up. And then we're gonna top it with a candle. So easy to do and so cute. For a flat candle, I'm gonna be using one of these little floating candles from the Dollar Tree. They're nice and short. And just pop that right on top. I did think about putting a candle holder inside a candle holder and like actually floating the candle. But I really decided I just wanted the candy and not the water. But I do think I have too many in there because I want there to be sides for the candles so it's a little bit safer. So I did dump a little bit of them out to make it a little bit shorter and then add my little floating candle right on top. I love those candles. I think they are great. I do, do love using them for floating too. But how quick and easy of a DIY is that for Valentine's Day? You've got all your fun candy hearts. You've got a candle, a pastel, little candle holder. I think it's really cute and it coordinates really nicely with the other DIYs that we've made so far today. And this will look really cute on the pink one as well that we did for the tree. I was thinking pastels. Now for the next DIY, I have a little wood heart that I got at Dollar Tree, a little pink bucket that I actually got at Dollar Spot. Um, they do have these, of course, at Dollar Tree, but I really liked this pastel color. And I wanna try turning this little wood heart into like a little candy heart topiary. So. I got a dowel also from the Dollar Tree. I just cut mine down a little bit because it was a little bit too tall. And then the tricky part is trying to drill a hole right into the tip here. I did notice it was a little bit challenging. I did put some wood underneath of it to kind of get some leverage. But once I got it started, it wasn't too bad. So my first drill bit though was totally not wide enough. And um, that dowel is a little bit wider. So I switched um, drill bits here and um, went in and made it a little bit bigger and we were able to like get it to fit nice and snug inside to make the structure of the topiary. Now, like normally a topiary would be like a plant or something like that, but ours is gonna be the little conversation hearts. I think that's gonna be so cute. I put a little dot of hot glue in there and then just put that in there. I got a nice um, firm hold and now it's just a matter of kind of painting it to kind of make a blank canvas because between the conversation hearts that we're gonna attach, you're gonna be able to see through it kind of like you could on the little conversation heart tree that we made. And we're gonna be covering the top, the bottom, both, even the sides with the candy heart. So I went ahead and painted all the surfaces of it, just white acrylic. I'm also painting most of the dowel too, cause you're gonna be able to see that poking out of the pot. And I really love how this turned out. I think it's so cute. Hey, check out my new drying gun. My drying gun um, bit the dust. And so I got this new one on Amazon. I love the color. I think it's so pretty. 
Now it's time to decorate this. This was actually kind of like a lot smaller than the tree, so it definitely wasn't as time consuming. But I'll show you my strategy for gluing on the candy hearts to this. I was going to at first do rows like we did before. And I guess I did technically do that, but like it's kind of a bent row to kind of go with the shape of the heart because the bottom is going to be lower and even on the top, it's going to be like lower right there dipped. And so I am doing a row. Um, I did three on the bottom, five on the next one. But as you can see, that middle piece goes down a little bit. And I'm just going to do as many as I can fit. This one, I can fit another one. It does slightly overlap the edges, but I think that's okay. So we're gonna do a total of seven on this row. I do want it to have as many on there as I can get attached. But to keep everything centered, I do start there in the middle and then just keep gluing those out. You can do a couple at a time, as long as you make sure that your hot glue is still nice and hot before you attach them. And just like before, I'm trying to alternate colors, trying not to repeat colors next to each other because um, I do want it to look really random. Up here at the top, I can only fit about, um, I think a total of seven on this top row with that little piece going down a little bit in the middle, gave me the perfect heart shape. So this is what we have so far. And I told you we were gonna cover the back, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this same exact thing here with the back. That plan worked really well, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing back here. I kinda know about how many rows I'm gonna need. So I went ahead and did the center first, and then we're just gonna fill it up with candy hearts. Now that little wood heart was like sort of thick, so there's plenty of room to cover the sides of it with the little candy hearts too, to kind of make it look the total effect. You know, we did the candy heart tree, so this is gonna be like a candy heart topiary. I thought about doing this with a foam ball, but the little foam balls that I can find at the Dollar Tree were a little small. I didn't think it would be that cute. I thought it would be cuter to be in the shape of a heart like this. So the front and the back is covered. It kind of looks like a sweet treat you wanna eat, doesn't it, on a stick? And then we can start working on the sides. I kind of made mine go like all the same direction, um, point side down. And you know, depending on how much the other ones kind of overlap the sides, you kind of have to move it around. But I had plenty of room to glue everything down. And then we're just gonna do the same thing all the way around. It's okay that I didn't paint like the bottom of the dowel there because that's going to be um, down in the floral foam, which I'm going to use to hold this up. And this was actually a pretty easy DIY, and I was really impressed with how well it turned out. Super cute. So everything's covered. I'm just going to go ahead and use my heat gun to try to get any of the little glue streaks of hot glue off of it. And just like the little tree we did before, I'm gonna go ahead and seal this to kind of make it look more permanent, hopefully hold up year to year. So again, I'm using the Rust-Oleum matte finish. I didn't want anything too glossy. And I'm just gonna spray both sides of that to get a good seal. And the matte finish still gives you that chalky texture that you want on your conversation hearts. Isn't it so cute? It does look like you could eat it. Now for the um, little tin, these little foam pieces from the Dollar Tree fit perfectly in these little tin buckets. The bucket's perfect, I don't have to do anything to it. Just go ahead and put the foam down inside and then we can just take this dowel right here in the center of the foam, pushing it down inside, nice and sturdy. Then to cover up the green foam, I'm gonna be using more of those candy hearts, trying to use as many of those yellow and green ones as I can. And, but I will have to open up another bag if I do want to get a few more colors mixed in there. But just filling it up till, you know, you can't really see any of the foam. And I think it turned out so cute. Now I did have um, the handle in the back, so I kind of switched that to the front by pulling that out and placing it back in. But this is how it turned out, our little conversation heart topiary. Very cute, very sweet, and really easy to do. I bet you didn't know there were so many DIYs you can make out of Valentine's Day candy. <laughs>
I love it. I think it's so sweet. Back to the DIYs, I found this great picture frame at Dollar Tree. It's actually like a soft pink leather. So I thought we could do a fun little conversation heart DIY on this. But I kind of want to do like a floating frame where it's just glass with no back to it. So I go ahead and remove the paper and the um, back of it. Also going to remove the little staples because I don't want you to be able to see those. And I just pull those straight out with my pliers. But I do want the glass in there and I want it to be like a conversation heart kind of suspended on the glass, which means we're going to make, need to make a stand since we don't have a back anymore. So I'm going to use some Dollar Tree craft wood and just cut it down a little bit wider than my frame. And since it's unfinished wood, I'm also going to go in and give it a coat of paint. I just used white acrylic on mine, painted the top and all four sides of that. And the frame's going to be pretty lightweight, so I think there will it'd be pretty easy to attach the frame to that to do like a little um, kind of standing sign, if you will. That looks good, and now we can start putting together the heart. I was worried that if I put the heart on the glass directly, um, I was going to have a hard time actually making it look like the shape of a heart and so I'm going to show you what I did to kind of um, make it more like the shape of a heart. <laughs> so the first thing I'm going to do is just put a thin bead of hot glue along the inside of the frame and then glue the glass back in. Trying to push that down with a paper towel so I don't get too many fingerprints on this. And then I also um, am going to have reinforce it a little bit with a little bit of extra hot glue on the back just to make it a little bit stronger. But I was trying not to do any of that where it was really visible from the front. But the pink leather frame is perfect for this. I love this color. It's like stitched as you can see. Now I have a little wood heart that's a perfect size. So I'm going to use this for a stencil and I'm just going to use some white cardstock again. And this is just a wood heart from the Dollar Tree, a little ornament. And I use a pencil just to draw that out of my white cardstock. And I'm going to actually glue down the white cardstock heart first and then add the candy hearts to it. So I still have that heart shape because I didn't think I was going to be able to pull it off without a little bit of structure behind it. To give it that shape so I just cut that down the same size as that wood ornament then to attach it to the glass I just do a coat of Mod Podge on the back of the paper heart I love working with cardstock it's so easy to Mod Podge and deal with um, as you can see there's no wrinkling um, it's easy um, to keep working without having to let it dry and stuff like that but I don't want it to wiggle around too much when I'm gluing the hearts on there so I did heat mine up a little bit with my heat gun to try to help that dry a little faster and then I thought we could fill it up with candy hearts I am glad I decided to do the paper behind it because I really don't think it would have looked like a heart too much without that shape behind it but I'm actually going to do this one in rows so I started the very base and just alternating colors I'm going to glue the little candy hearts up into the top of the shape and then I'm going to do rows to kind of fill out the rest of the heart so I'm kind of laying them out kind of seeing how many I can fit I fit five in the first row I can fit four in the second row so I'm going to go ahead and do this mirror image here on the other side and again, trying to make my colors a little bit alternating. And then just do four dots of hot glue and glue down my little candy hearts. Whenever you can do multiple dots of the hot glue at once, it's going to save you some time. Making sure they're all down. And now we can start on the next one. I can only fit three. And that's going to fill out the heart. So I do three on each side, gluing those down. And this turned out really sweet and cute. You could always do this on a larger scale if you wanted to do like one of the eight by 10 frames or something like that from the Dollar Tree. That would be super cute too. And you could even hang it on the wall um, with like the glass um, frame, but I wanted mine to be like on a display. So that's why we've made this little stand here. It's just a matter of attaching it. Again, it's pretty lightweight. So I think hot glue will go a long way. Um, to glue it down 
And I use the Gorilla Glue hot glue. It seems to work really well for projects like this. I am going to do another bead of the hot glue along the back where you can't really see it just to make sure it's super strong. And this DIY was actually really easy to put together. Very cute for Valentine's Day and I love that pink leather frame and the appearance of the little floating candy heart here in the middle. This is how mine turned out. Super cute. And the stand actually worked really well. I like uh, DIYing Dollar Tree frames like that. You can get some really cute looks. Isn't that so cute? Okay, the next set of DIYs, we're gonna switch it up to Coastal Valentine's Day. You guys know I live near the beach in Florida and I love coastal decor for my home and I love it for every holiday. So I wanted to give you some fun ideas to bring coastal into your Valentine's Day. Let's go. We're gonna start with one of the little chunky love signs from the Dollar Tree. It's actually a hanging sign, but it's definitely thick enough to kind of stand on its own, which is what I'm gonna use it for. So I'm just going to remove the twine from the back. I don't really care about the staples back there. And I want to make this look like the beach. So I picked out lots of blues. These are the colors that I used for this. And I'm gonna show you how easy it is to do a beach scene. Uh, trust me, like anybody can do it. Basically, when you look out to the ocean, you're gonna have like a sky, and then you're gonna have lots of different shades of blue. So that's what we're gonna go for. So I start with like this blue cotton color, kind of reminding me of a sky color. And I'm gonna do it like on the right side, and I'm gonna kind of have the beach curving in from the left. So I don't wanna go all the way across with my band of the sky, but I wanna cover like at least three letters with it. Then I'm gonna go in with like a more turquoise color, do a band of that. And I'm even using like the same paintbrush. I'm just wiping it off with a baby wipe in between coats because a lot of these coats are kind of similar in shade. It's not really gonna mess anything up. And I want it to be all kind of blended together anyway, so that's gonna work. This color is the Caribbean blue um, from Delta. And we're gonna do that too, kind of swirling it up to the left there so we have room for a beach over there. Now I'm gonna try to do like a wet look on this. And so you could do acrylic on this, it'd be really cool, but I'm gonna kind of show you a way you can do it without acrylic. The final color I use here is cloudless. And it's kind of my softest blue color and I am just going to blend that in and in between the different shades of blue just blend it together you can always go back and add a few more different colors of blue if you want to add like just a little bit of variation in the color and see how easy that is I was thinking about painting the left side um, tan, but it's already wood. I want to add sand to it in the future, so I think that's going to be fine. It's going to blend in about the same color as the sand. Then I'm just going to go in with a finger sander, not necessarily for paint, but these signs aren't always cut perfectly, and they kind of have like little splinters on them. So I'm just going to kind of clean mine up a little bit here with a finger sander. And I think that looks pretty good. Now for the heart part, I thought it'd be cute to kind of cover it up with one of the Dollar Tree sand dollars. These are the sand dollars from the Shore Living Line at Dollar Tree. Um, it's gonna be here before you know it, guys. It comes out every spring at Dollar Tree and I can't wait for the Shore Living Line to come back. It is my time of year. <laughs> so I wanna go ahead and make sure it's secure. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue it down with some hot glue first before we attach sand to the sign to make it look like a little beach. And I think that looks really cool. It definitely gives it a nice coastal feel. And then I'm gonna go in with some tan Dollar Tree sand and just some school glue. I'm just gonna do a layer of school glue all over the L, part of the O. And kind of, I'm just going to flatten that out with a paintbrush to give myself a nice even coat of school glue. You could also use Mod Podge for this if you don't have any school glue. And then I'm just going to sprinkle Dollar Tree sand all over those areas. A nice thick coat, but not too thick. And then I'm going to spray it with some of the spray glue. I get this at Dollar Tree. It's a little hit or miss at Dollar Tree being able to find it but I love it because you can kind of glue from the top 
because once you have your coat of um, sand on there, um, sometimes you need just a little bit more glue to help hold everything down. And the glue under and the glue on top really, I think, helps for that. I'm going to carefully go in there and start the drying process on that. I also want to make sure I don't really have like any sand stuck to the sides of the letters. So I'm just going to clean that up a bit as well. And I'm also going to do like some seashells and stuff like over on the L. I think that'd be really cool. But for right now, I'm just trying to make sure that that sand is stuck down. So I did do another coat of the spray glue and dried that. Now for the seashells, I wanted like little tiny seashells. So these are the Dollar Tree seashells that come in the little glass bottles. And I'm trying to find like the smallest ones I can. But I also like want a variety. So I'm thinking tiny and I'm trying to decide like what kind of shells I want, how many I want. Um, I also get some little tiny starfish um, on Amazon. I have those posted in my shop. That's what you see there. And I'm going to mix one of the one or two of those in there as well. I think that looks pretty cool. And I was trying to decide if I wanted just like three here in the left corner. I do end up adding more. Now the trick to get these to stick is to use hot glue and then push it down through the sand. Um, so my sand's not totally dry. It's still a little malleable. And because you want to glue to the sign behind it, not the sand. Because if you just glue it to the sand, it is going to fall off. Um, and then I decided to kind of continue that theme all the way up. Just using more tiny shells and starfish. Trying to just make it look really random like little shells on the beach. And they're a lot smaller than the sand dollar, but I think it looks pretty cool. So I am digging how that looks, but I do want to give it that wet, glossy look we talked about. And I didn't really want to use acrylic today, so I am going to try some spray lacquer that I had um, from Rust-Oleum and to make it shiny. It's the only thing I had that was super glossy, and this definitely makes it look wet, which is what I was looking for. And it was pretty easy to do. So I just sprayed that on there, gave it a quick dry, and this is how it turned out. Pretty cool, huh? I loved making these DIYs today. I think they turned out really fun. Here is like a little close-up view of my love word. And we have lots more with this coastal beach theme. Really fun for Valentine's Day. It can go with your coastal decor. You can mix it up with kind of a new theme for Valentine's Day. And even if you're not in a, like a romantic relationship, you can have love for the beach, right? <laughs> now the next DIY, I'm just using a Dollar Tree sign. I wanted one of the bigger ones. I think this actually had a couple pieces that might have fell off in the store, but I didn't really care. Um, I just wanted to use the back of it anyway. It's a nice large one and I wanted to do a really big like driftwood heart using those little wood slices from the Dollar Tree. Whenever I find those wood slices, I always try to stock up. They have like um, the wedges, the circles, and the sticks. The sticks are my favorite because I think they really look like driftwood. I'm going to go ahead and replace the hanger with just twine. That way I can just knot it in the front like this. And I'm going to go ahead and attach it now because I won't, probably won't be able to get to those holes after I attach all of the wood to it. So this is what they look like. They're kind of random. As you can see, there's like <clears throat> different like widths. Um, they're pretty standard in length, but they do vary a little bit. Some of them have branches and stuff like that, but all of it kind of gives you that look of driftwood, which I really enjoy. Now, if you have real driftwood, you can always use that as well. Sometimes these crafting materials can be a little bit easier to work with. I also like the Dollar Tree driftwood. It's more of a flat piece, but it's really easy to craft with too. And I'm just going to start in the center. We're going to make all of the driftwood look vertical. I thought that'd be a really easy way to do the heart shape. It's just a matter of finding three that are the right size. And I really couldn't um, since they're all about the same length. So I am just going to have to cut some of them. And now one of you guys told me that I could replace the blades here on my miter scissors. I got these miter scissors on Amazon and they are extremely dull. So 
I'm gonna show you how I did that. There's a little nut here on the right side and I ordered the replacement um, blades on Amazon as well. I think I have them both listed in my shop. And you pull out this screw. Mine was a little bit difficult to take apart and I think it's because I've never changed the blade in mine before. So then you have this part, you can just take it out and then it's a matter of getting the blade out. Again, mine was pretty tight and so I went online to try to figure out to read some directions and guess what? There's a little circle in here that you have to pop out. I popped mine out with a little screwdriver and then the blade came right out. Now putting the new blade in was a little tricky as well. Um, it just took a little bit of maneuvering and actually the little tab part here fell out on mine as well. I don't know if that normally happens, but I popped it back in and then I'm gonna pop this the little circle back in. I did struggle with that as well. I did kind of have to force that in. Um, again, probably just because I haven't changed the blade in mine before. Then I'm gonna pop it back in here. I'm trying to be so careful. I don't wanna cut myself, but it was definitely more challenging than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> then put my screw back in and put the nut on the other side and we have a fresh blade on the miter scissors and they worked so much better. I can't remember who told me that so whoever it was thank you so much. And then you can just cut these very easily. It's probably the easiest way I have found to cut these. And then I'm just going to hot glue each piece on. Um, each piece is like shaped a little bit differently. So like if there's like a little twig sticking out, I'm going to have that kind of pointing up, you know, kind of working around each other, trying to get it as tight as possible. But, you know, I left that brown backing on the background. So if there are any spaces in between the wood that um, is open, it's all going to blend in together with the driftwood. I'm also trying to kind of randomize where I put the cut piece. Like on that one, I put it like kind of in the middle and I'm just gonna keep mixing it up. So it's kind of like putting together a puzzle, I always say when you're doing driftwood, because you kind of have to try it out first. You wanna at least wanna lay out your row. And then this one, I'm gonna do the cut piece a little bit higher. Just kind of thinking like <clears throat> when you're laying flooring and stuff like that, you don't want it to be all lined up. You want it to be kind of random looking. And that's what you wanna do with driftwood. And as you can see, I even found like a curved piece there to kind of go around a certain area there that was a little tricky. And so pretty cool. You're gonna want a variety. I started with, um, a couple of bags here and then I actually added some more because um, I liked the variety of the pieces being able to kind of go through them. So I started with three bags and I probably technically only used three bags on this big sign but I am actually going to open up two more bags just so I can kind of like um, have good choices um, to um, get just the right size piece. If I'm doing like a thicker piece, I try to continue that for the entire line. If I'm doing a thinner piece, I, I do like a whole row of them kind of like that to kind of keep it consistent. And I like some of the gnarlier looking ones too. And I'm trying to mix up. You can see there's a, like a slight variation in color too. I'm just trying to make it look super random as I work my way over here to the side. Now you're definitely going to need a way to cut it. You could always use a saw too, but since you're like um, fitting and gluing and all that stuff at the same time, the miter scissors work really well and they are very inexpensive. They do take a little bit of hand strength to be able to cut if you don't have any of those, but I really like them for projects like this. Anything that's kind of 3D, they will cut. They they won't cut things that are flat. So these are 3D, um, and so they're, you know, round, so it's going to cut it well. I'm going to go all the way over to the edge. One piece is perfect there, and then we can start on the left side of our driftwood heart. Again, just piecing it together, cutting and gluing as we go. Now, I was trying to think how I could decorate this. I'm going to decorate it very simply because I don't want to cover up all this gorgeous driftwood art. And, you know, I've made driftwood hearts before here on my channel, and I love how they turned out. But this one has a completely different 
feel with like the wood slice sticks. I really love it. It looks really professional and high end and um, no one would probably believe that I made it with supplies from the Dollar Tree. So I was getting to this point, I was a little bit slim picking. So that's when I'm going to go in and get some more of these to kind of um, up my game, give me a little bit more selection. I just kind of, um, you know, mark it with a pencil so I can kind of cut it to the right length. If you try to estimate, you can kind of cut it the wrong length and then have to cut it again. But again, just kind to fill this entire heart out. I'm trying to get through <clears throat> the voiceover on this video. As you guys know, I was really sick. My whole family was. We all got sick at Christmas. And um, it has been a journey because it was definitely a virus that took out our voices. And I'm still not 100%. So I'm going to have to take lots of breaks today. I'm trying to drink some hot tea with honey to try to get me through this voiceover because it's still kind of a struggle. Um, my son got it later and he went back to college sick and I know a lot of you guys were concerned about him. He is feeling better. Again, he still has lingering things, but I think he's back in the groove of things. And we almost have this filled out. As you can see, I opened those extra packages, gave me a really good variety. So like this is a nice thick chunky uh, row and we are almost there. Now, I thought about doing a bow or something on there, but again, I didn't really want to cover up the driftwood, so I'm just going to do like a simple little coastal touch. I think one of the little Dollar Tree Shore Living Starfish is going to be perfect just to give it a little beachy touch, but not cover up all this gorgeous wood. And I like the way that these are like stained. I don't really have to go in and stain or anything like that at the end because you already have kind of a slight variety in shades of wood. And we did it. We covered the whole thing up. I'm just going to clean up any like hot glue strings or anything like that. Melt those with my heat gun and make sure everything is glued down. The hot glue I use is the Gorilla Glue. It works really well to keep stuff on like this, like even a vertical sign. I think this is going to stay together. And this is how much I have left over. That's why I said I probably only used three bags, but technically I used five bags. And then um, this is the Dollar Tree Starfish. It's white plastic um, molded, but it does kind of look real. And I'm just going to see which little rays are touching it and just add hot glue to each one. I'm just going to leave it the white color. I think I like the contrast against the wood and just kind of glue it down here on the bottom right side. And I think that's perfect. I don't think it needs anything else. So this is our little driftwood heart. I did switch up the piece I had there on the left because I didn't really like the piece I had on there. But now I think it's perfect. And this is how it turned out, our little driftwood heart for a Valentine's Day. Very coastal, but can also like work with any kind of like rustic or farmhouse decor as well. You just might want to decorate it a little bit differently than using just the starfish, but I think it turned out really sweet. What do you think? Okay, next DIY, I'm going to take one of just the plain white hearts from the Dollar Tree that looks like slatted wood and then one of the little shore living mermaid tails. Those come in a three pack, so they're such a great deal for $1.25. And I always try to have extra so that I can use, use them year round. Now, I don't really wanna leave it natural wood. I kinda wanna make it more ivory. So I'm just gonna go over mine with some antique white. I don't really care about covering up the pattern on there, but it will show through a little bit because I only did one coat. And then I want the boards of the heart to look blue. So I'm going to use my favorite color of apple barrel paint, this cloudless color. And I'm just going to do one coat over the white sign. I chose the white sign because I thought it would be easier to paint. But I think this also comes in like light pink and red. And it's a smaller heart than what we did for the driftwood heart. But I love how it turned out. I think it looks really coastal, like little coastal boards. 
Now for the mermaid tail, I want that to hang down or be across the heart. I thought that'd be really cool, but I thought maybe we could encrust it with like seashells because like these little seashells from the Dollar Tree kind of look like mermaid scales. So I thought we could kind of get that kind of vibe with these. Now I was trying to find smaller ones. Mine were a little bit bigger in this bottle, but I'm trying to go through them and I don't really care. Um, uh, what pattern is on them but I'm just kind of going for size on these and trying to like do them like scales down the mermaid tail and just like the driftwood you do kind of need to lay these out in advance so you know <clears throat> what's gonna go where I'm just gonna do the tail part I'll do the fin with something else now you could use hot glue for this I'm going to use tacky glue um, just because these shells are really small. I think that's going to be strong enough, but you can use whatever you want. So I do a nice a thick coat of the tacky glue. I've used this to encrust um, like anchors and stuff like that on my coastal wreath and stuff like that. And it held up really well. And so I'm just going to go ahead and then put all of my shells back on here. Uh, making sure it has good contact with that tacky glue and fill up my mermaid tail. Then I thought I could do something a little bit different for the tail fin there just to kind of make it look a little bit different. So again, I'm gonna use the tacky glue. It's nice and thick, do a nice thick layer here at the bottom. And then I'm gonna use these really tiny little shells. Again, I'm trying not to use the gray. I'm just kind of using like the tan. It's gonna be kind of in the same color family as the ones before. And we are just gonna go all over, kind of encrusting it. Anywhere that one will fit, I'm gonna to try to put one down in that tacky glue to glue that on. And it gave it a really cool look. I'm always looking for fun ways to do a mermaid tail for like, you know, the mermaid signs or the mermaid tail signs. There's so many fun ways that you can decorate them. Just a few more pieces. I do have a few more exposed wood pieces here. I want to make sure that I have really good coverage. And it looks like a little fin down there for a mermaid. And you have a little bit more work time when you're working with the tacky glue too. I did go ahead and spray it with some of the spray adhesive from the top two just to try to make sure it is good and secure. And then I went in with my heat gun and gave it a quick dry. Um, sometimes it's good to let that sit for a while, but I was kind of in a hurry because I wanted to get more crafting done for you guys. So I was able to dry mine pretty well with a heat gun. Now for the heart, I'm going to go ahead and replace the hanger just with some twine. Again, knotting it in the front. I just find that the Dollar Tree signs always hang flatter against my wall when I hang them like this. And it looks pretty good too. So I just feed that through. I don't want too long of a hanger. It's not too big of a heart. And I absolutely love how this turned out. I kind of had this idea like in my mind, but actually seeing it come together it turned out so cute we are going to add a few more details to it as well to kind of give it more of a valentine's day vibe but i do want it to look coastal farmhouse so i'm going to take just a little bit of antique white here and just distress in one direction to kind of make it look like weathered blue boards from the beach just a very light dry brush. And then um, I'm actually gonna hot glue this on. I didn't leave the hanger exposed or anything like that. I thought we could just hot glue it. You could always dangle it down, but I think that way is a little bit easier and have it kind of come down the side of the heart. The blue also kind of looks like the ocean, so that's cool for a mermaid. And then I'm gonna use one of the little craft board, Be Mine from the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree and a couple of their little wood heart stickers. Now, you know, these little craft wood pieces from the Dollar Tree definitely need to be painted. Um, they're made out of kind of a cardboard material, though. I always feel like they might fall apart a little bit when I'm painting them. So I'm doing a nice thin coats of ivory on these. Um, but as you can see, they're definitely flexible. They're cute, but I prefer the wood if I can get it. But I thought this sounded like Valentine's Day and I found that the Valentine's Day selection at my Dollar Trees right now is a little slim. So 
I'm going to go ahead and paint the two hearts too. I flipped one around so I could have them going in separate directions and just removed the sticker on the back. And then I'm going to dry them, go over the bee mine with another coat because again, that craft um, board material really soaks in the paint. But I thought that this ivory like antique white color would be a nice contrast against the blue boards. I'm going to go ahead and hot glue my bee mine on right up here to the top right. Kind of have an open spot there in my heart. And then we can just attach the little hearts kind of down just randomly going down the sides. Um, I know that they're stickers, but I like to hot glue mine on. It makes them a little bit more permanent. And this is how it turned out. Our little bee mine mermaid tail with like the shell encrusted mermaid tail. I think it turned out really cute and I think it's gonna look really cute with my coastal decor in my home. What do you guys think about this one? I think it's really whimsical and fun and it you can definitely tell it's a Valentine's Day decoration as well. Next DIY, we're gonna DIY one of these tinsel hearts from the Dollar Tree. Um, I'm gonna start by removing the hanger I really dislike the tinsel on these things, but it's got a great plastic cage underneath and it's nice and large. Now you could do the same DIY that I'm going to do with the metal um, heart wreath form if you want. I do have that one too, but I thought it might be a little bit easier to glue to the plastic versus the metal, but I think either one would work. So I'm just going to unwind all the garland. It makes a little bit less of a mess when you unwind it than cut it. And start with our Dollar Tree rope. This is the white nautical rope from Dollar Tree. It is the six foot length. And I use a total of six of them on this project today. Almost exactly six of them. So I'm going to start with three. So I went ahead and opened up three packages. I'm going to keep it all one long length so I can make it all the way around my heart. They do have plastic tape on the end and I don't want that to be visible at all. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that. And I want to do a fun braided rope theme on this and it turned out so cool. So I first want to gather the first three pieces together. So I actually just kind of hot glued those together let that set up a little bit, kind of making it all one piece so that we can braid it. I'm just gonna do a traditional braid like you would do with hair. That way it can kind of lay flat against our wreath form. But once this is dry, I kind of try to cinch it up a little bit to kind of make it a little bit smaller. But we're gonna start on the outer row. It's gonna take three braids to make it all the way around this because it's a nice, thick heart wreath and I think this is going to look so cute um, on my door for Valentine's Day. So I went ahead and replaced the hanger now because as you can see I'm going to cover up the whole the little hole there so it's going to be kind of hard to get to that later so I just tied some twine on there and then hot glued this over that area where it kind of all comes together. I make sure I let that set up for a little bit and then we can start braiding this. Now when you're braiding it, it's also going to kind of tangle up the rest of your rope. And um, so I did like just a small part there. As you can see, it's kind of doing a reverse braid on everything else. Since it's a nice six foot long um, length on the rope, I just go ahead and do a section at a time and then kind of untangle it there. Now I just hot glue it to that outer band of the heart. As you can see, definitely going to take three of them to cover the whole thing. And then I can start on my next section of the braid. I braid a little bit and then um, unwind everything and then we can go in and start gluing it. I did find that if you kind of unwind it as you go, it makes it a little bit simpler. But you can lay it on there nice and flat like this, hot gluing it down but kind of one section at a time. If you do like one braid and then just kind of like string it out is what I'm doing. Cause I do want to try to continue the one piece of rope to make it all the way around. So I don't have any stops and starts. I'm gonna have all of my stops and starts at the top so I can cover that part up at the end and kind of make it look intentional. 
Now you can even go around crazy surfaces like this point at the bottom of the heart because of course the rope and the braid is very flexible. So I just glue that down, keep braiding one section at a time. Um, as you can see, I'm only doing about maybe five inches of braid at a time and then gluing it down. And then I have plenty left over to come all the way around. I actually had, um, I don't know, maybe a foot or so left here at the end. And then I'm going to, well, maybe a couple feet. I'm gonna glue it all together here at the end, kind of like what we did to start it with. And then I'm gonna go in with some heavy duty scissors to kind of saw through that rope and cut that off. And that was a great way to do it because it kind of kept everything together. Gluing that to the top part of my heart kind of making it go next to right where I started as tight as I can, but leaving room for the other rows of braids. So this is how much I had left over. So I'm gonna go ahead and open three new packages. Now this was plenty to do the other two rows of the heart, because of course they're gonna be a little bit shorter. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the plastic tape off these. We're gonna gather these together at the top with hot glue like we did before and glue that on to that cage. This really didn't take as long as I thought it would be. Like um, I thought it went a lot faster than like if you're wrapping a wreath or something like that, but the results were really cool. I'm really glad that I decided to do the braid. Um, at first I was just gonna kind of wind it around, but this definitely gave it a really unique handmade touch, I love it. I glued mine onto the middle and then just started braiding like we did before. And this is gonna be the shortest row. This is the inside heart. So it really didn't take very much of the rope at all. And I had plenty left for the middle section. I'm trying to overlap enough where you won't be able to see any of the plastic cage or tabs, um, but not too much because I wanna be able to have good coverage with my final row of braid. Again, when I get to the tip of the heart, I just kind of glue that down, twist it around, and you can bend that little um, point very easily with a flat braid like this. And yeah, as you can see, this one was a very simple. If you wanted to do um, just a single rope braid, you probably could. I can't think of anything from the Dollar Tree that they have um, that is like a cutout heart like this, but you might be able to make something out of foam board or something like that if you wanted to kind of freehand cut one. But they do have lots of these kind of like wreath forms available, the metal one and the tinsel one that has this plastic cage inside. Now for the third row, it's getting kind of full up here, but I was able to kind of work mine in, gluing that into kind of the hole there. And we're gonna keep braiding and gluing this down. And I was worried that you were gonna be able to see some of this like red cage through, but I was able to get it pretty good and tight where you can't see it. And you can kind of see now how it's all gonna come together. Three rows of the braided nautical rope. It turned out so pretty. We are gonna decorate it a little bit too, give it um, a few more coastal touches, but actually on its own, it like looks so cool. Again, I get to the point, just keep working it around and braiding the rest until I can get all the way up here to the heart making sure that when I put the glue on there, I'm gluing like the line of the heart, but also like the little side pieces as well to kind of give me a little bit more area to um, have contact with. And again, when I get here to the end, I'm just gonna hot glue it together first before I cut it. It's gonna give me a nice finished edge. It's gonna kind of keep everything together and it's gonna kind of reduce any fraying of the rope. I don't want any of that. As you can see, I have lots of hot glue on my silicone mat. So the silicone mat works really great if you're hot gluing a project like this. I'm gonna try to burn off any of the little hot glue strings. And then I did go in any areas that kind of had a gap like that, 
between the braids. I did put a little bit of hot glue in there. You can kind of hot glue the rope to itself to kind of fill up any holes that you might have to make it look all more consistent. Isn't that so cool? Now for the top part, I do have a little bit of extra rope from that first heart that we braided. And so I'm gonna use that to kind of make a little strap to go around the middle part of the heart here. It's gonna cover up all of the loose edges and make it look more complete. The back kind of looks like a hot mess with all the hot glue, but you're not really gonna be able to see it back there, so it doesn't really matter. So I hot glue uh, my three rows here, trying to leave enough room to be able to wrap it around and glue the other ends. So I wrapped mine around. I did the center one through the hanger. That way it would hang straight and glued that one down first. Then I'm gonna do the other two, cutting those down to size and gluing them on the sides of the hanger to make sure everything um, stays together and hangs nicely in the end. And this was definitely wide enough, the three pieces of rope, to cover up all of the loose ends of the rope. And if your hot glue is too crazy, you can try to clean it up a little bit with a heat gun. But again, I don't really care. I'd rather have the glue on there and have the rope attached than not. And kind of arrange it here on the front to make sure all of my loose fibers and everything is covered up by the finished rope. I did a pretty good job of keeping it all in that same area, so it was pretty easy to cover it up. Again, you're gonna have like, you know, hot glue strings and stuff like that. That's why it's always handy to have your heat gun. And then I was gonna just try to decorate it. I was thinking the Dollar Tree Shore Living Starfish would be really cute. I thought about like covering the whole thing with starfish, but then I decided, you know, less is more. I'm only gonna do one side of the heart and do like three of them over here on the side. Now I don't wanna leave them white. The white against the white, I don't think provides enough contrast. Um, if you were doing the brown rope, I think that would work, but I want to add a little color. So I'm gonna do Cloudless by Apple Barrel Acrylic Paint and these little plastic starfish from the Dollar Tree are so easy to paint. I'm only going to paint the front. That's only the place that you're going to be able to see. But I do make sure that I get on the sides of each one of the rays too. And one coat of the acrylic paint is plenty. I'm going to do them all the same color. And then attach them just to the bottom right side of the heart. And I think that turned out really beautiful. So here's our beautiful braided rope heart. Gonna kind of arrange these on here like this. And then it's just a matter of hot gluing those onto my wreath. And I'm really glad I decided to make this DIY. I was trying to think of what I could do for my front door for Valentine's Day. And I think this is going to be perfect. Um, it's not super hot here in Florida in February. So I think all my hot glue will hold up just fine. I do have slight protection to my front porch um, for weather and stuff like that, but I think it's gonna be just fine. So I glued all three down and this DIY is complete. Our little braided rope heart for Valentine's Day. Doesn't that look so cool? I think it looks so coastal with the rope and the braids and the starfish, but I think really beautiful for Valentine's Day as well. And it's definitely a, a work of art. Everything you see there is from the Dollar Tree and just a really fun DIY to make today. If you're enjoying today's video, be sure to hit that like button. It always helps my videos and don't forget to subscribe. Okay, next DIY, I picked up a little rope love sign from the Dollar Tree. It actually wasn't Valentine's Day. It was just home decor. Um, but I thought that would be really cute to make a coastal Valentine's Day sign with. I'm going to use one of the little Dollar Tree wall shelves. I love using these to make signs because they're nice and thick and flat. 
wood. I'm only gonna need one for this one. It's gonna be plenty big enough. And then I just had some scrap wood left over in my garage that I had cut down, but Dollar Tree Craft Wood would probably work as well. I just wanna do a base because I wanna make a standing sign for the love sign. Now, if you can't find that love sign, it'd be really easy to recreate with Dollar Tree rope. You don't really need the wood part. It just kind of was an easy way to do it. And now for the background sign, again, I want to make it look like the beach. And um, I'm picking out just all my colors of blue again. And I am just going to show you how easy it is to do a beach scene as well. I always tell everybody that they can do this. It is really simple to do and it's very forgiving. So if you mess up, you can always fix it. So I'm going to do a nice layer of Caribbean blue and then like this cotton blue up here for the sky, just blending it all together. My first like painting DIY that I made when I came to Florida is I took an old painting from my old house that had flowers all over it and I did like an abstract beach scene and I love it. I still have it hanging up above my TV in my living room. It was so easy to do. So I just kind of alternate the different shades of blue and I'm also going back and blending them all together. Again, just using the same brush, just kind of wiping it in between the different shades. And I was trying to use the same shades that I used earlier, but I don't know what I did with one of them. So I kind of mixed it up with another color, the Caribbean, Cloudless, um, blue cotton and Caribbean blue and the Delta is from Target. The other ones are all from Walmart or I actually get the apple barrel on Amazon Prime now. I didn't have a color for sand so I kind of mixed the brown that I had with some white to kind of give me a sand color and I'm going to do that here at the bottom. Just a little stripe of beach down here at the bottom of my sign. I'm not going to do sand on this one but you totally could if you wanted to and kind of blend that in together. I also want it to kind of look like sea foam. So I did some white acrylic too, trying to do like a sea foam look where the ocean meets the beach. Just kind of pouncing that on there, blending it in. Um, I didn't think it was, I think it blent in a little bit too much, probably because my paint is still wet. So I'm gonna go in here and add a little bit more white and again, just blend it in. I can also use that white to kind of go in and do some sea foam. I can also use it to kind of give me some wave action out here in my ocean. Again, kind of blending it all together with my different shades. I just want a very abstract beach scene. And it's just a little bit of working with it, but so easy to do. I think that's gonna provide the perfect background for my little love sign and it's just the right size. And I thought those would make a really good shelf decoration for Valentine's Day. I'm actually going to put mine, I think, on my console way and my entryway. And here is the little love sign. Just like with regular rope, I'm just going to burn off any of the fuzzies on there. It's pretty clean, but it could use, it had like a few strands. And you can kind of see, if you can't find this one, how they formed the word love with the rope. It, again, it would be really easy to recreate with Dollar Tree rope. This actually had hangers on the back, which I don't need. So I'm just gonna unscrew those and save those for another DIY. So I have a flat wood surface here on the back. It's gonna make it super easy to glue down. So I just do a bead of hot glue all over the word love and attach it to my sign. I don't mind the holes on the side of the shelf. I think they look nice and rustic and just pressing that down super easy. Now I do want it to stand up. Um, you could make it a hanging sign with the holes on there though. So I cut my craft wood um, down to size. Actually, this was scrap wood that I had in my garage. And I'm gonna mix like a driftwood color by using the antique white mixed together with a little bit of antique wax by Waverly to give me this nice shade of driftwood because that wood was like really yellowish looking. It didn't look very coastal. And I'm gonna go over the top, the front, the back, and both sides with that color, kind of staining it on there. 
I do like a little bit of the wood grain showing through so I kind of wipe it with a baby wipe as well and then I go back in and distress it with just the antique wax by Waverly to kind of accentuate like the wood grain kind of make it look like driftwood color which is what I was going for. I'm going to distress the front of it too because you're going to be able to see that and just kind of blend that in as well. Just kind of working in one direction so you still get that wood grain like striation but it took away all of the yellow out of this wood <clears throat> and it was a little rough this wood um, so I did have to sand it down a little bit but I think that looks pretty good. Now to attach it here to the front I thought I could just glue it on. It is a little heavy with the wood and then the wood sign and the rope though. So I thought maybe I should reinforce it to make it a little bit stronger. And I'm just going to do that with some of the Dollar Tree little mini Jenga blocks. But first I'm just going to use the Gorilla Glue hot glue, do a bead on the bottom of the shelf and glue that on the base trying to center it on here. But I left plenty of room here in the back so that I had room for braces. I'm only going to do three. I just put glue on um, the bottom and on the shelf to kind of brace it, just make it a little bit stronger. And then just let that glue dry. Super easy DIY. And I think it turned out really pretty. What do you guys think about my little love ocean sign? Again, we did the very easy like ocean scene abstract painting on the back with the rope love word. Definitely looks coastal or nautical on it as well. And then the base, I tried to give that weathered driftwood look from the beach. I think it turned out pretty cool. It was definitely an easy DIY and I think it's going to look really cute with my coastal decor for Valentine's Day. Hey guys, I wanted to take a quick moment out of today's video and let you know that I have introduced memberships for $4.99 a month. You can get early ad-free access to my videos and it's a quick easy way for you to support me here on YouTube. All you have to do is hit the join button under this video. Okay, next DIY. This is one of the little burlap 5x7 canvases from the Dollar Tree. I love these. They come in 5x7 or 8x10, which I love because they're standard sizes. So you can use frames like this from the Dollar Tree. This one's like a weathered white sign I thought that looked really coastal. I just removed the glass and the staples and I'm going to reinforce the corners with a dot of hot glue in each corner because when you put the canvas in there it kind of can stretch or break your frame a little bit. Now for the heart for Valentine's Day, I'm going to use a wood heart from Dollar Tree um, just as a stencil and use a white paint pen to kind of sketch out a perfect little heart here on the front of the burlap. And then we're going to use some of my favorite, the Dollar Tree macrame cord in white. And we're going to do a little bit of rope art for a heart for Valentine's Day. The rope looks very coastal, especially against the burlap. And with that weathered frame, I just start right here at the very tip of the heart. And I am just gluing straight to um, my sketch of the paint pen for the first row of the heart. Just kind of doing one section at a time. Make sure to protect your fingers there if you're hot gluing. I like to use the little um, hot glue finger protectors from Dollar Tree. And just keep that same string going for the next layer of the heart. As you can see, I'm only doing one little section at a time here. However much I can kind of glue down before my hot glue starts to set up a little bit. And I'm trying to keep it as tight as I can. It would be cute with just an outline of a heart, but I'm going to go ahead and fill mine all the way in. I thought that would look cool. So I just keep following that same heart pattern that we made with the stencil and just keep going until we have a little heart. Um, you get kind of like almost a triangular shape here at the end, um, but this macrame cord is nice and skinny enough that it's pretty easy to... Um, get it exactly where you need it to be. 
And this is one of the little cake decorating tools from the Dollar Tree. You guys ask me a lot what that is. It works great for hot glue, these little tools. I like to pick those up as well. I go all the way to the very center trying to fill the whole thing up with rope. But I also don't want like any exposed hot glue if I can help it because I don't want my macrame cord to look yellow or anything like that. So I try to do it as cleanly as possible and then just kind of burn off any excess glue strings. And now we can put this together. So there's the frame. I'm going to pop it in. Now it is a, you know, a canvas board, so it's thicker. So it's gonna stick out the back. I just do a bead of hot glue on each side, working that in. Again, I reinforced my corner so that it would not break on me. Those Dollar Tree frames can be a little finicky. And then I want mine to stand up. So I saved the back of my frame and I'm just going to attach that to my burlap canvas with hot glue all the way around. That way I have a stand. And so you can totally use the Dollar Tree frames with the burlap canvases. And I think this turned out really cute. It was very easy to make. And you know, this doesn't necessarily have to be coastal. This could go with just about any style. I did have a little bit of um, hot glue that you could see there. So I tried to clean that up a little bit with my heat gun. And this is how my little macrame heart turned out. Super cute. If you wanted to add like a little coastal touch, you could add like a starfish or something on there as well. But I think the rope and the burlap and that distressed frame really gives it that coastal farmhouse vibe that I was looking for. And it was really easy to put that one together. Now the next DIY I wanted to use, I wanted to make some Valentine's Day coasters. So again, I'm gonna use a wood heart from the Dollar Tree. And this is the thinner white rope. This is the 11 foot white rope. And I thought the thinner white rope would be easier for this DIY. I'm gonna start with just a piece of white felt that I got at the Dollar Tree. And I am just going to use a Sharpie and sketch out two heart shapes on there. That way the back of my coasters have a nice felt surface. And it's gonna be um, something that I can use to attach the rope to it. And then I'm just gonna cut this out. I want it to be a perfect heart shape. So I don't really care if I'm including the marker line. That will be on the side with the rope anyway. So you won't be able to see it in the end. And I just cut out two. I'm only gonna do two coasters. I'm doing these for my coffee table and I think I only need to do two. There's only two of us around here now empty nesters and then this is the dollar tree rope um again this is the skinnier one i find that this one's a little bit harder to find than the six foot because i went through my huge rope stash and i didn't have very much of this now i am going to start with the end of the rope being at the very tip of the heart hot gluing that down I'm also overlapping the edge of the heart just a little bit so that you won't be able to see the felt in the finished project. And it's kind of the same construction as the macrame heart because once we make it all the way around the heart like this, we're just gonna keep it going. One piece, less loose ends, and just gluing one section at a time, we're gonna fill out the heart. Now I cut like both of the hearts the same size, but you know, anytime you're hand making something like this, they actually turned out differently. Um, and I kind of like that. I like that the hearts are shaped a little bit differently. It makes them look more random. Um, here at the end, I try to make sure I cover all of it and I kind of glue down the very tip, trying to make it look as clean as possible and try to kind of glue together any gaps in the rope there because the center part can be a little bit tricky. And we have one little rope coaster for Valentine's Day. Definitely coastal, very sweet, and very easy to DIY. I do put a little glue here on the end so that it doesn't fray the very end of the rope and kind of keeps it all together in one piece. Super cute. I'm gonna use that same piece of rope to do our second one the same way. Again, I'm gonna start at the end and I did it exactly the same, but um, again, 
you know, the felt kind of stretches, the rope kind of stretches, so you kind of get a little bit of a different look, even though you did it the same way. So again, just continuing that, kind of gluing one section at a time. You can kind of go a little bit crazy on this and do like half the heart at once. And then I think this is what probably made it look a little bit different. Um, maybe how I did the last piece and how it kind of all came together. But like the first one was kind of like a tall heart and this one's kind of like a wider heart. But again, I kind of like that. I again glue the loose edges of the rope to make sure that they don't fray and that they look as nice as possible so that I can display these for Valentine's Day. I think these will work well um, for coffee cups or whatever I want to sit on my coffee table. Um, and I really like how they turned out. I've always wanted to do a rope coaster and I don't know, I don't think I ever have. See the difference in shape? Slight difference. They have the felt back. You could do that in any color you want. And if you wanted, you could even do um, like the brown rope color for these. That would look really cute as well. And this is how they turned out our little rope coasters for Valentine's Day. These would make a great gift as well. You could do like a whole set of them, tie them together with some red ribbon, be a super cute gift that anybody would enjoy. Okay, the next set of DIYs is going to be Valentine's Day tear tray DIYs. The theme that I chose for my tear tray this year was Let Love Grow. And I wanted to do like a romantic, like pink roses, very beautiful tear tray. And so let's do it. So I always like to do a little bit of a garland or something like that along at least one of my tears. And so that's exactly what I'm going to do with this one. I'm using some of the white heart lace ribbon from the Dollar Tree. And I just cut a piece down to size. I can drape that along the top tier. And this is the tear tray that we're going to be decorating for this one. My white wood tier, two tear tray that I got on Amazon. Now this was kind of my inspiration piece for the whole thing. It is a little pink Let Love Grow barn that I just got at Dollar Tree. And I really want to go with like a light pink and white, like romantic roses kind of feel for this tear tray. So I don't really appreciate that Love was in kind of a bright red. I'm trying not to really do any reds on this one. So I'm just going to update the color. Just simply using the Love word that's written on there as a guide. And using my white Posca paint pen, I love these paint pens, um, I am going to just go over what was already there. Um, I don't really mind like the little red hearts, that's kind of nice and subtle. And I kind of want to distress the barn, kind of make it look um, a little bit more antique anyway, so... I'm fine with like repainting this one. I did go over it just to kind of make sure that, you know, paint pen can be a little blotchy here and there just to kind of smooth it out a little bit. And also to make sure that I covered up like any of the red that might be peeking out. And then I'm just gonna distress the whole thing um, just to kind of make it look older and prettier. So I'm just using a little bit of like parchment ivory color and just distressing in one direction. I even distress like the wood on the roof and stuff like that. Just a very light dry brushing. And then I'm also gonna go in there with a little bit of pink. This is pink polish. This was like a very similar color to the barn itself. And I did that to kind of distress the word love and the white words too, to kind of give them a little bit of distressing too, to kind of make it all go together. And it just has, I think, way more character now. I'm going to put it right here in the back. It's in the back because it's kind of tall, but you can still kind of read it from the front. And I think that turned out really cute. Now for the next item, this is a little candle holder that I picked up at Dollar Tree. Um, it's got the little wood love heart on it, and it's just a light pink glass. Instead of using it for a candle holder though, I thought it would make a really cute little vase, little mini vase that we could make for plants for the Let Love Grow theme. Now I don't really want like the exposed natural wood, so I'm just going to paint that real quick with a little bit of antique parchment ivory paint just to kind of give me that pink and white feel with it for the vase. 
Now to hold the flowers up in there, I'm just gonna use a little bit of floral foam from Dollar Tree. I like to buy these ones that come like in the four pack like that. A little bit smaller and easier to work with, especially for small projects like this. I'm just gonna cut off a small piece and shorten it so it'll fit inside. Just something that I can kind of put my plants into. And I'm gonna be using some of the lamb's ear from Dollar Tree. I kinda of need it to be on a smaller scale though. So I've already cut this apart, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut it down even shorter. I'm gonna be using a lot of the Dollar Tree lamb's ear for this project. I loved the soft, fuzzy, like green leaves. I think it's gonna look really pretty with like my pink roses theme and not too colorful. So I just take a couple of the little sprigs and just kind of shortening them down so they are about the right scale for this little mini vase and arranging them in there. I'm actually not going to do roses with this one. I actually picked up some of these little soft pink little hearts. They do have a touch of glitter on them, but nothing crazy um, to kind of take away from the feel of this project. And so I think these are gonna be just fine. So I'm just gonna be using the little pink hearts instead of flowers. I thought that'd be really cute with the let love grow theme. And I like to work with like odd numbers on stuff like this. So I'm gonna do a total of three of them. I think that's gonna be plenty. I'm making sure to not include the leaves with them. This piece has a little baby's breath on there and I did try it, but I thought it kind of took away from it. So I'm just gonna be using just the little pink foam hearts, that is all. And I love the soft colors of the pink and the lamb's ear together. I think it's so pretty and kind of romantic feeling, as is the entire tear tray. So this was super easy. Let me show you how it looks, our little pink love vase. I think they kind of have these van little candle holders year round. I've seen them a lot. I'm gonna put that kind of in the front here. Um, and then that's kind of the major big pieces I want for the top tier. So we're gonna move to the bottom tier. I found this great box at Dollar Tree and they had these in like three different sizes, I think. And I kind of chose the medium size for mine. I thought it totally matched with the theme. And we can make it like a little box sign. It says be mine on it. It's got like the pink roses and really the feel that I'm going for with this tear tray. But it's all kind of glossy, plasticky looking. So I'm gonna distress mine. I'm just using some like ivory color um, and a dry brush. And I'm just gonna simply like lightly distress all over anywhere where you might be able to see even like the flowers on the side it's got like a little magnetic um closure on there so it'll stay closed but i just kind of want to age it a little bit um with a very light distress i think that looks better and i was happy with the distressing but i thought it was still a little too glossy from like that you know the seal that they use on it so I'm then gonna go over it with just some matte Mod Podge and that's gonna take a lot of that gloss out and just make it look more like, you know, just regular paper, which is kind of the look that I wanted with this little box. So I'm not gonna put anything in it. I'm actually just gonna display it on its side so you can kind of read it like a sign. Isn't this so cute? Little Be Mine box from the Dollar Tree. It didn't need much, just a little distressing. We're gonna put that over here on this side, on the bottom. And then the next piece I found was from the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree. It's a little light up rose. I don't know if it's specifically Crafter Square. I think that's where I picked mine up. Um, or if it's Valentine's Day, but it has like a little turn on there. You can light it up. I'm gonna use a soft pink color to kind of go with that romantic feel. Pink polish, apple barrel paint. I got this on Amazon. I'll try to link my colors. I've been buying Apple Barrel paint on Amazon a lot more because it's only like 58 cents, free prime shipping, so, easy, so much easier than going to Walmart. So I just used a makeup sponge and gave a light coat of pink to that. Not gonna worry about the back of it or anything like that. And then I'm gonna like dry brush a little bit of that ivory all over just to kind of make it look a little bit more vintage and aged too. And we're gonna be doing little pink roses on this tear tray from the Dollar Tree. And I think this is gonna match perfectly. And it even lights up, how cute is that? 
I'm gonna put it right back here on the other side of our tear tray and keep DIYing. I saw these little light pink um, paper doilies from the Dollar Tree and I thought we could do something really cute with these. I like to do like little mini pillows sometimes for tear trays and I thought I could probably turn the paper doily into like a little like quilted like little heart pillow. So that's what I'm gonna go for here. I'm just using some plain white fabric um, from Dollar Tree. It doesn't matter if it's cotton or polyester. I think this one's polyester. And I have it folded in half so I can cut two layers. I'm gonna need two hearts a little bit smaller than the doily. And then I thought we could just attach the doily to the fabric and make a really cute little custom pillow. Now I don't want to get any ink on my paper doily so I'm kind of using my ink pen giving myself a nice border around and I'll just know to cut way inside that line um, because I do want the scalloped edges of the doily instead of the edges of the fabric. Now even though this is just like regular polyester it does cut pretty well. I didn't really notice any fraying or anything like that. But as you can see, I'm just cutting, oh, I don't know, like a quarter of an inch on the inside of my heart so that I have a large enough pillow, but really no exposed edges. Now, I don't know if you could, I'm assuming you could use regular Mod Podge for this, but I happen to have some of the fabric Mod Podge. And so I'm going to try that. But again, I think you could probably get away with regular. As you can see, the Fabric Mod Podge, the thing I noticed different about it is that it's a lot thicker. So I'm just gonna spread that Fabric Mod Podge here on the back. And if you can see how thick it is. I kind of have to like lop it on. <laughs> I'm trying to spread it out as evenly as I can. The doily is fairly thin. And then once I get it covered on the back, I'm just gonna simply lay that on one of the white fabric hearts. And the reason I chose white is because I wanted you to be able to see that beautiful like pink doily design all along the edges. I thought that'd make a cute little pillow. So I'm just kind of pushing down on that, making sure it is all glued down just with a little wet wipe. And then the other white heart can be the back of the pillow. And it's just a matter of putting it together. It's gonna to be really simple, of course, no sew. I don't like to break out the sewing machine unless I have to. And so I'm just making sure that is kind of dry enough where I can work with it. And we can start putting this together. On the bottom heart, I just do a bead of hot glue. I'm gonna do like about half the heart here to get us started. And kind of line this up. Again, I don't really wanna see any of the white fabric from the front. I want it to be lined up fairly well with the, with the fabric heart that we attached the doily to. I left a little bit too big of a window, so I'm going to go ahead and close up one side. And that's just going to leave one little part of the heart that's open so that we can stuff the pillow. Now for stuffing, I like to save old bed pillows instead of buying polyfill. I think it's just a great way to recycle those. And so I'm just taking a little bit of fluff. It doesn't take much. And we're gonna stuff this little pillow. I have seen recently that do some Dollar Trees are carrying the little bags of polyfill. So that's always an option as well. I have picked up maybe one or two, but I really kind of rely on bed pillows cause you know, those things don't last that long. And then I'm just gonna do a little bit of hot glue to close this pillow up. I thought it turned out really cute. It kind of has like, you know, a pink quilted pillow um, feel, but also the look of a dainty little doily for Valentine's Day. And it actually worked out pretty well. I haven't used that Fabric Mod Podge too much, but I do like it. I'm gonna kind of lean it up against the pole here in the very front and kind of off to the side. Now the next find was from Dollar Tree. It's a pink glass candle, super cute. It's got like, um, it's like the little glass studs on the outside. What is that called? I can't remember what that's called. Um, and I thought that would be really cute. Kind of leans into the romantic feel. And I'm gonna put it right there in that corner. Then for the other corner, I found the cutest little pink and white little creamer from the Dollar Tree. And I thought I could use some of these little stickers that I got at the Dollar Tree 
These are so cool. They look like um, embossed metal. I was really impressed with these. I kind of wanted to do the love heart, but I thought it would be easier to kind of do the long rose. It's going to kind of go with my theme too. And it's kind of got like a pink behind the rose, so it totally goes with the theme. Now, even though it's a sticker, it didn't really want to stick too well to the ceramic little creamer. And so I'm just going to do some hot glue here on the back to make it a little bit sturdier. And I love how this turned out. Like the um, sticker doesn't look anything like a sticker. It really looks like high end, like embossed metal on there. I was really impressed with how this turned out. Isn't that so cute? And I think that's gonna be the perfect size to kind of fill out for larger pieces on this tear tray. And then we can start filling everything else in. Now I thought maybe you couldn't see the little light up um, rose back there as well. So I just put a little wood block from five below underneath of it to kind of boost it up. And I told you we were gonna be using a lot of the lambs ear from Dollar Tree um, for filler for the Let Love Grow. I really wanted a lot of plants. I am gonna kinda cut some of them down into like some smaller pieces. Um, so I can kind of work it in and out of all the things that we just DIY for the tear tray. This tear tray was so easy to put together and it looks so pretty. I just love it. So I start here on the top tier and just start putting like a sprig here and there wherever it kind of makes sense. I don't really want to cover up that let love grow barn though because that kind of was my inspiration for the whole thing. So I will push that down a little bit here. Um, to make sure that you can still read it. But basically that's gonna fill up the two corners on the top that don't really have anything. Then moving to the bottom, we're also gonna be using the lamb's ear down here. And again, I'm just kind of filling in any open space where I kind of think it will look good. And anytime you do like a plant kind of theme with your tear tray, it's so easy because you can fill up all the empty spaces on your tear tray easily with the greenery of your choice, and this definitely worked well. I am so excited that Dollar Tree has the lamb's ear now. It's just one of my favorite greenery to decorate with. I have a few gaps on the sides, and I actually had some individual leaves from cutting those apart, and so I'm just gonna kinda just scatter those around as well too, just to keep going with that theme. Now, these are the pink roses that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. I do wanna see if I can kind of age them, kind of make them look more real if I can. So I'm gonna show you, I think it kind of works. I probably could have done a little bit more to it, but I wanna to try to kind of whitewash slightly to kind of add some color variation to the Dollar Tree roses to see if we can make them look a little bit more realistic. So I just start, there's six little um, pink roses on there, and I start with some warm water in just a jar and I'm just adding that antique parchment ivory color and mixing that up. I don't really know my ratio. I didn't add probably as much as I wanted because I do have to go back and add a little bit more. But I'm just going to take the roses with the stem still attached and dip that down in there. I've kind of done this technique to age like the um, fall leaves from Dollar Tree and it worked really well. I didn't really dip them though. So this is the first time I've tried like dipping them. So I'm just gonna dip all of them, laying them flat on my silicone mat like that. Um, so it kind of all drips down towards the inside of the flower. And then I just dried mine with my heat gun. And you can already see after one dip, I do get a little bit a different variation, but it wasn't as significant as what I was wanting. So I added more of that ivory color um, to the water to make it a little bit thicker. And I'm gonna go in with a second dip on mine, just because I don't think I added enough paint the first time. I kind of want like some little dots, little variations in color. I think anytime you can do that to a cheap flower like this, you're gonna get like a more high-end look. So I dipped all six of them again, just laying them face down like that. And then I went in with my heat gun and dried them because I wanted to be able to get this project done, but you could just let them sit. But this was so much faster. 
And as you can see, the pink is softer. I've got like a little bit of variation in colors. You can even see some spots on the bottom of that one, which I really liked. And it also makes each one of them, you know, a little bit more unique um, and individual. And I think these are gonna look really pretty to finish off this tear tray. Just a matter of drying them. I kind of dried the bottom of them first and then kind of went back and dried the insides. And they dried actually pretty fast. And another thing about using your heat gun is if any of your leaves are like bent up or anything like that, super kind of easy to iron them almost with the heat to flatten them out. This is how they look. I think they're so pretty. I'm gonna go ahead and remove them from the little stems. I just left those on there to use in the dipping process. I just want the blooms so we can scatter those all around the tear tray. Isn't that such a soft pink color? Now, if you're only able to find kind of the more obnoxious pink roses they have right now, you could probably do this technique with more paint to soften them up. Mine were already kind of a light pink color, but I think it did add to them and I plan to use that technique in the future, I like it. So for the top tier, I'm gonna scatter them around, one here, one here. I'm gonna kind of make it look like the greenery um, for the roses is that beautiful lamb's ear. And I just want a little touch of roses all over. I kind of have this bigger area here that I needed to decorate. So I'm gonna do, I think three roses here and then I'll save the other three roses for the bottom of the tear tray. And just kind of scatter those around too, kind of like wherever it kind of makes sense to have one. And I just love this theme. It's probably the most romantic looking Valentine's Day tear tray I've ever done. Um, I've released a couple of tear trays, Valentine's Day tear trays in the last week. And I've done some really fun things um, I did the Conversation Heart tear tray. I did um, the Love Letter theme tear tray. And this is kind of the Let Love Grow, like pink rose, very romantic Valentine's Day theme. And I think it looks great in my kitchen for Valentine's Day. What do you guys think? I'm gonna give you guys a little look around and then we'll get started on the next Valentine's Day tear tray, so don't go anywhere. Isn't it so pretty? I really love the soft colors, how everything kind of works together. I think it's really pretty. It's definitely one of my favorite that I have ever DIY'd. There's just something really romantic about it, I think, and I think it's gonna work great this year for my kitchen for Valentine's Day. Okay, you guys have made it all the way to the final reveal. I want to thank you so much for joining me today and for watching this long Valentine's Day video. If you enjoyed, please hit that like button, comment your favorite DIY in the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed, I'd really appreciate it. We're trying to get to 30,000 subscribers. Enjoy the final reveal of everything I've crafted so far this year in 2024 for Valentine's Day. I look at you, you make me blind. Why do you have to be so beautiful all the time? I know I can't be with you It's killing me to see you with someone else What to do? Now I'm in the corner and watching you smile Watching you smile And I can't get over you I'm losing my mind All of the things that I wish I could tell you Every time when you're passing me by I fall in love There's something about you I wish you were mine And if I only could be there to hold you It feels like 
Thank you so much for watching today's video. I also want to give a huge shout out and thank you to all of my Crafty Beach Bum members for supporting my channel here on YouTube. Thank you so much to Coastal Couple, Karen O'Haran, Pamela Bergeron, I Am Mojo Jojo, Melinda Elizabeth, Jamie Job, Susan Edmonds, Carrie R, Tracy Knight, Verna Noctigal, Nancy Wunner, Julie Miller, Tammy Coates, Janae Farrington, Pamelia Wren, Whitney Harrison, Maria Grace, Donna Schreiner, Tina Kane, and Sandy C. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. I appreciate you so much. To join, all you have to do is hit the join button underneath this video, and I would really appreciate it. Now, if you'd like more crafting DIYs, I have a more Valentine's Day DIYs YouTube things that you might enjoy this video right here. Happy crafting!